Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Astro Games Day 122, where we will be playing Pillars of Eternity, aka Pillars of Conversation, as I'd like to call it. Um, quite the uh, quite the game with quite the conversations, and uh, I'm sure we'll have lots more today to look forward to. Yeah, so this is Astro Games Day 122, the uh, probably only day this week that I can stream. Um, jumping straight into announcements. Uh, the coming weeks are going to be really, really busy for me. Uh, I'm, I do work in education mostly, um, which means September is quite a busy month with all the schools starting again, the, new, uh, the influx of new students uh, coming along there. Hey Deviant Fish, welcome! Welcome to my side of Twitch. Um, so yeah, lots of new students coming along, lots, that means a lot, a lot of work for me. Uh, catching those students and making sure their transition is as smoothly as possible. Um, or as smooth as possible. Um, and that means a lot, a lot of work. So, I've been looking at my schedule, I've been looking at my upcoming schedule. And one stream a week should be manageable, but that's mostly gonna be it. Uh, which means I'll be a bit on the down low for now. Um, until September blows over and we go into October. And then I should be fine for another two streams a week, you know, returning a bit to the, uh, to the standard. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Also depending on the network contacts that I make in September and maybe they have work and stuff. Hey, Zero, what up? So, we'll see. Uh, with your own company, you never know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, just to prepare you guys for it, September is going to be a busy, busy month. So, one stream a week um, is going to be the norm for that month, I think. Maybe even weeks where I can't stream at all, we'll see. Uh, I'll try to do one stream a week at least. I'll try to keep that up. But... Yeah, um, speaking of upcoming streams, this uh, Pillars of Eternity marks the final uh, game in the cycle for those that keep up with the cycles. Uh, Pillars of Eternity marks the final game in my cycle, which means that after this, uh, normally I would start uh, Dark Souls Episode 7, um, you know, restarting the whole cycle. However, uh, I did a Mountain Blade stream. Um, I think a week back last week or a week out a week before that uh, I did a mountain blade stream and everyone seemed to really really enjoy that so what I'm going to do is after episode 6 is done the next Astro Games Day is going to be a revival of my Mount and Blade uh, mod review uh, stream and I am going to explore a new mod with you guys um, the mod I chose for this, I believe is called Geki Kujo or something along those lines. It's, it's a really weird name. Um, but it's Mountain Blade in the Sengoku Jidai period. If you don't know what that is, the Sengoku Jidai period was the period of war in Japan. You know, with the samurai and the uh, all the different clans fighting for uh, fighting for ultimate power. So that's the setting of the mod. Uh, I heard great, great things about the mod. I've read great, great things about it on the forums. So after episode six is done, I'm eager to jump into that one and explore with you guys whether it's actually worth all the praise. I've got the latest version that is out, out right now, uh, downloaded and installed. I, te I tested it, didn't see a lot of the mod itself. I just started it up, made sure it all worked and then quit out again. And uh, yeah, we're going to explore um, Gekuji or whatever that mod's called, the Sengoku Jidai mod. Um, that's going to be Astro Games Day 123, which will be next week, um, on a Tuesday as well. Um, Tuesdays are, uh, are the days for streaming for me uh, in September, um, as far as I can tell right now from my schedule. So next week, Tuesday going to be Astro Games Day 123 and it's going to be Geki Kujo or something like that. 
uh, after that mod uh, review, um, so I'm looking far, far into the future now, that's another week ahead, um, is going to be Astro Games Day 124, and there I will be streaming a game that I have won with uh, won via a giveaway, uh, which was actually a pretty funny story. I was watching the streamer, and he was doing the giveaway thing. He was doing the um, he had this program which he used to raffle off the games, and that program just pulled everyone from chat, so even the lurkers and everything. So it was just raffling it off randomly to uh, even to people that were that were lurking and stuff so then it was the program was like raffling your name and then it said speak up in chat and then there was no one and then it started raffling off again so that t that giveaway took like I think two or three hours because it was constantly raffling uh, lurkers it, it raffled the bot ones which was really really fun as well um, but I was about to leave that stream because I had to go and um, I had my, uh, my cursor on the red cross and all of a sudden that program raffled me. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna speak up in chat because he was so desperate. Um, <laughs> hey Sky, what up? And Hendrik, thank you for the host dude, welcome. Um, so yeah, he was so desperate. He, he was just like, oh my god, please someone take this game, because he was raffling for two hours, I'm not kidding, that raffle took two hours. So I was like, okay, I'll speak up in chat, I'll grab the game, and then i leave. But then I did that, and then I felt really guilty, because I was about to leave, but someone... So there was this moral conflict within me, or this, this eternal conflict going within me, going... Alright, do I grab the game and sort of go like a thief because I already said goodbye in chat and everything or do I just leave but I grabbed the game and he was very grateful for that and chat was grateful for that as well because they had been looking at this list going raffling off all the time for like um, for like two hours so they were really glad that he could return to gameplay so I took the game and then I left and that's the game I'll be streaming to Astro Games Days from now. Um, it's called Unepic. Uh, I don't know much about it. I know it's a dungeon crawler slash platformer and that it has humor that's spoof on D&D. So there's going to be some weird D&D humor in there. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know much about the game other than that. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. But yeah, that's the game that I won for uh, uh, during a giveaway whilst almost leaving the channel. There's your uh, silly story for the day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's going to be streamed. First the uh, Sengoku Jidai mod is going to be streamed, then an epic is going to be streamed, and then we'll be restarting with Dark Souls Episode 7. So yeah, it's gonna take two episodes before we restart and Considering my schedule, that's going to be, take quite some time, probably two weeks, <laughs> so um, with one episode a week. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you guys about. About the emote, I have no idea. Silly stories and stuff, that's my trademark. I'm sorry, Hendrik, I'm sorry. I just, I just thought the, uh, telling this story would be fun. Um, but uh, you, you won't see silly stories every time I'm on stream so you can keep it your trademark I just I just picked it up for this stream and all the other streams are going to be serious business and you know gameplay and stuff but um, yeah um, about the emote I have no idea I haven't heard from the artist yet so and it's been a few days already um, I might I might have to pick it up, uh, you know, contact her again. Um, no idea, no idea. Uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully that will be a reality. Hopefully Seer Tank uh, will be a reality at one point. I thought the pipe was your trademark. Well, there you go. There you go. The pipe is the trademark of Hendrik. Remember, trademarks on streams are determined by your audience, not yourself. <clears throat> if the audience like like the seer tank it's my trademark it's my thing 
It's the silly, goofy War Thunder playthroughs that got me the Seer tank. And that's that's my trademark. Um, and that is that has been determined by the community as my trademark. So once we finally get my emote, I have a trademark. Hey Diego, what up? What up? Just going through uh, the announcements, as I usually do in front, uh, at the start of the stream, before we jump into more pillars of conversation. Um, speaking of announcements, are there any more? I'm thinking, but no, I think uh, I think that's it. Yeah, it's going to be an emote sky. I'm really, really psyched for that. If you know, I can get to uh, get to contact uh, the emote artist. You missed them? Alright, very shortly for you, Diego. Just before we jump into the game, very shortly for you. One stream a week uh, this coming uh, period because I'm really, really busy. I work in education. September is a really busy month then. Um, this is the final uh, game for episode 6 cycle and I will restart the cycle after two other episodes that are not part of the episode cycle um, where I'll be playing uh, Sengoku Jidai mod for Mountain Blade and uh, Unepic, the game called Unepic, which I won in a giveaway. For you, in short, Diego. Think of your channel, think of the rate response. <laughs> oh, my rate response, my rate response is trademark. Alright, let's jump into the game. Um. This one is the latest. <clears throat> yeah, so not a lot of streams coming up. Because mm. I do work in education in September with the influx of new students and everything. It's uh, it's going to be... Uh... I was happy. I was Sky. I mean, I freaking beat Philip Rich in Hearthstone in that... In that... Uh, when I did that dance. So yeah, of course I'm happy. I beat I beat Philip Rich in Hearthstone. That's like the freaking biggest accomplishment of my life. Gaming accomplishment that is. <clears throat> All right. So when we last left off, we were um, basically asked to uh, search. Right. Uh, oh, whoops. We were basically asked to search a uh, drug den and confront the drug dealer. Um, this assignment was given by his wife, I believe, who was about to leave him uh, because he was only busy with drugs. Um, that's like beating my Tyson boxing match without referee. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That achievement was amazing. Um, so we got into his drug den, which is this. Uh, where we are standing now and he didn't really like us interfering with his business so he fought us and this is the loot they left and this is us so you can see how the fight went uh, I don't believe I had a lot of trouble hey. with this fight can't remember if I looted them but I don't see much interesting left except for this one or is it just fine? Is it not magical? I, I, I'm I trained in my game brain to think that items with a blue background or a color background are magical, but... These are just fine, which is... Hmm. I'm taking the wand as well, just in case. So his wife gave you the divorce papers, so you make him give the signature? Uh, no, it was just like... She didn't dare to confront him, so we went out to tell him. And we were just going to tell him. Like, nothing more, just tell him. And yeah, yeah he wasn't really pleased. So uh, it, went, it went from nothing more than just telling him to uh, actually beating him huh? up. I guess he wouldn't mind if we stole his wine. Because, you know, he's dead and everything. The pots are crusted shut with some unidentifiable gunk. Ew. Ugh. Of course. Ugh. Mm. So, 
I'm expecting another fight upstairs. Probably. I mean, there were some people upstairs. Yep. get some casting out here. Alright, that's one. Hey, Ferrific, what up? Trying to convince my nephew to play. Good luck with that. Oh god, our mage is under attack. Get the wolf instead. Oh crap. Wait, why are you walking away? Okay, my character. This isn't going well. This isn't going as planned. Summon the skeleton! Alright, might still go well. Alright, at least we won. But yeah. man, my character is uh, not good, not good. Justice. A unique greatsword. A fine flail. I guess we're taking it because it's fine. Fine small shield. Of course, we're taking your money. We're taking the key. Might be, uh, might be of importance. All right, let's hold up for a bit. <laughs> let's regain that endurance. It was a tough fight. Tougher than the one downstairs, I. As far as I can remember. These jaws chipped and cracked as if knocked to the ground and set back in place. Okay. Don't think they mind taking us taking stuff from the table because you know <laughs> they're dead. Uh, ooh, a potion for endurance. Nice. Here's a random question, which is sort of vaguely related to this game. Has anyone transferred a character from Baldur's Gate to BG2? Yes. Yes, I did. Idea customs. Okay. You missed a draw. Ooh, gold. They have a gold. Idarian dialects. Okay. Used bronze key. Oh, there's a dude there. Yo, dude, hold on. First, we need to loot stuff. Someone has gathered sheets and towels to make a shift, to makeshift bed. A rumpled fabric is stiff with blood and unwashed sweat. Ew. One side of this overturned vase is splotched with crimson. Hmm. Huh. Yo, dude. A man lies. Oh god, here we go again. <clears throat> How does it work? Do you keep the levels and stuff? Yes. Does it adjust BG2 to be harder because of it? As far as I can tell, no. But I wasn't crazy OP either. I was like... Level 10 or something and you start Baldur's Gate 2 with a level 8 character. So... It wasn't crazy OP. It was slightly more powerful, yes, but it didn't feel like super, super OP. Um, at all. 
A man lies, bound and bloodied, on the floor before you. His face is a tapestry of bruises, and blood is spattered across several corners of the room. The man cringes and sobs as you approach. Gods, please, please, no more. I can't take any more. I'm not here to hurt you. The man pauses, gazing up at you. Y you're not? Oh, praise Bera. You're not one of his men, are you? He glances nervously behind you. I... He shakes his head. Please, I don't know who you are, but my name is Pernisk. This is my house. You have to help me. Oh, that's the guy we were looking for. That's the guy she tried to divorce from. Hmm. And, I, and we thought it was the guy downstairs. Um, in the story it said it was the guy downstairs, but apparently it's this guy. Then who was that downstairs? An imposter! Some wizard named Nirid. He came into my house, tied me up in here. He tortured me. And now, now he and his men are eating my food, breaking my things, selling Sveth inside my own house. He just turned up all of a sudden? Um, whatever you hold back. Spit it out. <laughs> uh, this would be a lot easier if you weren't trying to hide something. First he looks away, unable to meet your gaze. I may have hung onto a tiny portion of my supplier's share, but I needed that money. What exactly happened? He sent over the wizard, near it, the man downstairs. Pernesk shudders. To make up the lost copper, I guess. And to hurt me while I was at it. It feels like it's been days. Um, he's already taken care of. Pernesk stares at you. I can't believe this nightmare is finally over. He grins weakly. And seems to remember something. You have no idea what you've done for me. But... He looks up at you and away again. I need to find my love, Kenra. Only after what Nirith put her, uh, put her through, I'm afraid she won't give me a chance to explain. But she might listen to you. Please, she must be somewhere in Copper Lane. It's the only home she's known. Hey, BT, what up? What up? And please, don't tell her about this theft. About what I do. I could make it worth your while. A discount, maybe? Um, oh man, oh man, he still wants to lie to his wife after all this. Oh man, oh man. Perhaps you should trust her to make her own decisions rather than lie to her. I know, and I can't force to keep this secret. I just don't want to lose her. After what happened here, I'm sure she won't have anything to do with Sveth. Or me. If she finds out. Uh, Kenra sent me here in the first place. She did? Pernisk smiles brightly. That woman helped save my life without realizing it. Please bring her home and tell her everything is back to normal. I'll go talk to her. I can't thank you enough, truly. I've missed my poor Kenra. Aww. The poor right. dude. On one hand, he's been through a lot with, you know, a wizard faking his, faking being him and uh, his house being broken in and all that stuff. That sucks. But on the other hand, he's still a spam dealer. We'll just go tell Kenra what's up and she can make her own decisions. I think that's for the best. Yeah, so this happened, but your husband's still a craft dealer, so yeah. Have fun deciding what you want to do. Beauty Beast Gaming! Thank you for the host. <clears throat> Ooh, it's night. Um, where's the map? Where's the map thing? There's the map thing. Was it the goose and the fox? I believe so. 
Yeah. The goose and fox. I believe that's where we met Kenra. Patron. Yeah, we've done all these people in the end. I'm pretty sure. Noble, commoner. Kenra. Kenra looks up at you as you approach. What happened with Punisk? Did you give him the ring? Punisk was being impersonated by a powerful wizard. However, the real Pernisk also deals spare. <laughs> Just like BAM! Hey, what's up? Here's the truth! BAM! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's all we can do, so let's do it. She blings at you, stunned. I had no idea. Pernisk, he. She brings her fist down the table, slushing a drink. Damn it! How can I trust him after something like this? That he's lied to me for so long. She runs her hand through her hair and takes a deep breath. I should just be glad I found out about this before the wedding. Hey, binary, what up? Um, there are other men in time. <laughs> he still loves you. Let's let's go to the uh, do the hopeless romantic one. <laughs> Graphics in still music is basically turned off. What? Hey, Cloudberry Fox, what up? Long time no see, how are you doing? And Sneaky, welcome, welcome. Um. Hmm. Are we going with the hopeless romantic option? Binary Astral Berry. It rhymes. Okay, so what I'm not going to say is there are other men in Defiance Bay. You're smart to stay away from him. Those are the two options I'm definitely not going to say. But the other three, right now he needs help and forgiveness. I, I can I can see that being a good option. He still loves you, do you really want to give up your future together? Or I'm sorry it turned out like this. Don't I see? I've been the laziest lurker, but everything is fine. Living in Sweden now. Wow. Starting master studies on Monday. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Uh, what's the masters in? If I may ask. <clears throat> um. Um. Let us. Let us say. Right now he needs help and forgiveness. Let's not uh, let's not interfere too much with the uh, situation. You think I could help him turn around? I hadn't thought of it that way. She sighs. You really do see the best in everyone. I appreciate what you've done for us. I'm certain Pernisk feels the same way. You're always welcome to come see us if you need anything. Masters in food technology and nutrition. Nice. So, uh, you know, when you're done and you come on stream and I'm like, can you give me a diet of, uh, you know, this and this and this? And then you go, yeah, that's, uh, this is the best nutritional thing you can do. And then I'm like, thanks. Thanks, Cloudberry. And then I'll, uh, I'll have a whole new life. <laughs> oh, take this. This. She unclasped something from her neck. Picked it up from one of the merchants to help me stand firm in my decision. I'll be fine without it now. Reward! 
Let's see what it is. There it is. Reward amulet. Of intellect and of resolve. Well, we know who needs intellect. Lose the cape, dude. You need your intellect. Ta ta! Perfect. Yeah. Minor adventure added. This quest expires in three days. No companions at the stronghold. Okay. Oh yeah, the stronghold thing. Did we uh, did we do something? Complete it. Yeah. No, I can tell you how your footsteps have been made, how microbes grow in it, and what the human body needs. Well, yeah, exactly that last part. Like, eat this because then the human body needs this. But I don't need to know how it has been made or how microbes grow in it. No thanks. What was this again? Prestige security. I totally forgot about this. Lost for all, oh, man. Nothing new to report, nothing new to report. We definitely need more protection. Got 4,000. The towers of Katnua stand high above the walls of the stronghold. Upgrading the towers will grant perception bonus. Um. Yeah, let's do that. They do both plus one protection and plus two prestige. So there we go. Finished in three days. Give me the towers. Mhm. Mm okay, so we've done this whole uh, in part because we've been upstairs and talked to everyone here. And hey, Gmalt, what's up? How are you doing? So, um... Adair, you have said you fought in the Saints' War, but for which side? The one that blew up my god. I didn't mean anything by it. I imagine a man with a head made of fire and light could be very convincing. Funny thing about Dear Woodens. With all that fire and light, they just treated him like another authority figure. Interesting. I'm doing great, Jamal. I'm doing great. Looking forward to the uh, to the weeks ahead. All right. So we've explored that, or to the days ahead, I should say. Um. Let's check our journal. His old self done. Travel with Adir to the records archive, so that's definitely a quest. And go to the temple of Wodica. So, there we go. Uh, we came in here. But there is still something called Brackenbury there. Let's Let's check that out. Oh, I can talk to him? Adia wants to talk to you. Okay. The dozens. Pretty sure you won't find one among them who stood within a hundred miles of that bridge when the god hammer went off. Too bad, too. Soon there'd be less of them. The dozens? Why do they call themselves the dozens? Was twelve dear woodens? Stood outside Halgot Citadel, waiting for Wadewind to cross the bridge there. They had to hold him there long enough for the Godhammer to detonate. So that's what they did. The Godhammer? That's what they call the bomb that blew up Wadewind They blew up Wadewind with. Don't know much about it other than that. 
Anything kills a living god? Guess you gotta name it. What do you have against the dozens? Uh, nothing serious. Nothing I don't have against a lot of folk anyway. The dozens, they like to take things into their own hands. Gets ugly sometimes. We don't have them in Guildedville, but they be right at home there. They picked that name so they could do what they wanted and feel like it was right. Got nothing to do with honor or sacrifice. They like to invoke Magrin too, when they especially want to feel right. Somehow I don't think she'd be too impressed with that lot. I'm sure she'd like to set them on fire anytime they use her name, but the gods probably got rules against that kind of thing. Uh, there must be plenty of other groups that are better reflected reflections of the figures that inspire them. Sure, I just can't think any of the top of my head. I shouldn't say that. There's a group of Aethesians, the Night Market. They still do right by their god. Helped a lot of people to safety during the purges. They're easy to forget about though, because they have to work in secret. You can thank people like the dozens for that too. Let's continue on. Okay. Yeah. Actually, since it's night, and we are in quite a bad condition, some of us at least, it might be better if we uh, rest up in the inn and then continue our journey. So what we're doing now is we're just exploring Defiance well, Bay. Well met, friend. Um, there's a lot of lot of stuff to explore here. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. The man behind the bar is nearly the size of Nao Mao. Wow. A handle protrudes from his back, and his face is set in a stoic, stoic frown. He gives you a small nod. Here for a drink? There's a tiny pewter cup in front of him. He turns it in one broad hand but doesn't drink from it. Okay, this is a lively place. It was founded in the early days of Diawoodian independence by a traveling scholar named Errol of Le Levi. He wanted a place where kids of all backgrounds could gather and hash out issues facing their new country. He rests his elbows on the polished wood of the bar. It didn't take long for the place to fill up. Breckenbury aristocrats argued with dock workers from the gift while soldiers wrangled with politicians. Dial wounds have never been known to turn down an argument. He takes a sip from the tiny cup. Um, what happened next? Soon, Kith were coming from the farms and settlements too. He waves at the door, as if expecting a crowd to bustle in. This place got even more popular with the Valen sailors than the salty mast. And that was the problem. He drains his cup. No matter what people say about fair-mindedness and civil debate, there's only so much people will tolerate. He's a poet and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> Errol found himself on the wrong side of an argument with the wrong Thane. And when he disappeared a few days later, some said it was the work of that Thane. He shrugs, spreading his hands over the bar as he surveys the room. But Errol knew which way the wind was blowing. If you ask me, he skipped down, hit somewhere, hoping for rational minds to prevail in Defiance Bay. He cracks a wry grin. If only you could see it now. Excellent. Tell me about yourself, why not? Name's Bishop. Used to be a scholar of Barath. Now I run the goose and fox and keep the regulars in line. He shifts and you see a warhammer strapped to his back. What more is there to tell? Why'd you go from religions to taverns? The journey isn't as long as you think. Started with the Hollowborn, and with this. Takes a black bottle from under the bar and fills the, pu fills the pewter cup. Was my sister's son? He takes a drink. At the beginning of Wadewind's legacy, he was one of the first. I never expected there would be so many after him. Tragedy is part of the cycle, but it's followed by rebirth. Yet every year, parents were grieving for their hollow-born children, and the gods were silent. So you lost your fate? He leans forward, crossing arms on the bar. Baroth promises rebirth. Cycles. But the only cycle I found was this one. He taps the bar. Have a drink, have another, and another, until I couldn't remember how I got home. Wake up, come back. 
I finally woke up one day to see my family had packed up and left. For all I know, they'd left days before and I just hadn't noticed. But they were gone, so I came here. I've cleaned up since then. Not that I've found answers, he tells us to cut back. I've just stopped asking questions. Pretty tragic, but uh, yeah. Can I get a room? Suit of worldly wonders? Fletcher's stay? Vixen's burrow? Wow, okay. Uh, perception resolve? Hell yeah. Merchant stay. I assume this is the bonus last until the next time you rest or something. Party gained 2700. Wow. Okay. Well, we rested up. Hey, Hades2666. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? It's still night? What? Okay, this is weird. We went in, in there when it was night. We rested up when it was night. And now it's still night, apparently. Hmm. Interesting. I guess we read eight hours have passed. Maybe it's like super dawn. <laughs> Actually waiting for parcel with my new PC in it. Awesome. Waiting for five hours now. No estimated time zone given. Oh, that sucks. But wow, a new PC. That must be a uh, hype. Much hype. I'm kind of scared actually delivering service bugs up again as usual. Normally, at least in our place, um, um, when a delivery service like does that, they like um, place it at the nearest post office and you can just pick it up yourself they like call you or send you a note uh, so that's uh, that's usually what happens but finally done with this poverty laptop yes excellent as you near you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul the voices from his past seem to call out to you oh god guys here we go again reach out for the soul we see a man crosses his arms and sticks his chin out. Moonlight and torchlight color his face. Bullshit. The elf standing in front of him wears a panicked expression. Are you mad? I've seen it. Aha! The first man cries, raising a triumphant finger. You just said you'd only heard it. The elf blinks. What in the name of Galloway's beast does that have to do with anything? You said you only heard it. Now you're telling me it's a monster the size of two a mao with blood dyed fur. The man takes a step close to the elf. And now I'm saying you're a liar, Doran. Doran sputters. Gods, Viserys! Who cares what it looks like? It's a rabid wolf. You saw what it did to the sheep. The elf throws up both of his hands, shaking his head. You want to stay out here all night to see the thing yourself? Have it your way. I'm getting out of here. Fine. All right. Good. <laughs> the elf storms off, casting one last glance over his shoulder as he disappears down a hill. The man sets off in the other direction, a sword in one hand and a torch in the other. Within minutes, he comes to a broken paddock where the dozen sheep lie dead, their throats torn and their innards scattered across the ground. It is not the work of a normal predator. Yeah, they only... Uh... Oh, do you do that when you're not home two times in a row? Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. I live in the student room. Don't know, ring the doorbell correctly. LOL! The dress is not at home while I'm sitting here all day. Let's, uh, let's hope uh, that's not it. Have faith, Hades. They don't have telephones. <laughs> or they're just too crumply to pick it up. Something crunches through the dry gas. Viserys spins but sees nothing. He raises his torch higher. 
This time, rustling sounds from behind him, near the paddock. He turns again to see a wolf, it's not nearly as large as Doran had sworn, and while its fur is matted with red around its throat and paws, the rest of the elf's description is proven to be a rather lurid exaggeration. Typical. Zarius takes some small satisfaction in this, even while the wolf lunges for him, its jaws foaming and eyes rolling. Yeah. Mm. Just the expeditions out of Edmund's den are organized grave robbery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. If you say so. Over here, mister. Uh, what is it? Gordy, a boy watches the passersby and counts a grimy handful of coins. His face and arms are smudged with dirt, but except for the grass stains, his clothes are in good condition. As you approach, he blinks and makes a quick furtive effort to pocket his coins. Hey mister, want to know a secret? He wipes his nose with a sleeve. I know a real good secret. Looks like we got a little hustler here. Someone's raised this kid right. <laughs> right, I'm sure a squeaky voiced kid knows amazing things about the city. I wouldn't say that, they... They, they could. Really? What is it? I mean, those kids, you know, they're running around the street, they know the city most often better than the guards themselves. So, let's see what he has to say. He shrugs and clasps, clasps his hand behind his back, kicking a loose pebble. I just saw folks hiding some really neat things. I could show you where, but mom and dad told me not to talk to strangers. His eyes slowly roll up at you. But maybe you could help me with something. Then we wouldn't be strangers. Help you with what? Gordy's voice suddenly rises in pitch and tempo. The Crucible Knights have these daggers made out of March steel. It's the best steel around except for Durgan steel, which doesn't count because no one makes it anymore. Okay. He stops long enough to catch his breath. Anyway, there's his merchant over by the expedition hall, and he has a dagger made of real March steel. His eyes grow large and round. He said he wouldn't sell it to me because I'm a kid. And kids don't know anything about daggers. But that's not true. I know lots about daggers. I know about the different kinds of steel. I know how the Crucible Knights make them in a forge. I know the tip can pierce low guard skill armor. That one's good as sharp can cut through bone. See, I know plenty of daggers. And I really, 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 really want this one. And if you could just get it for me. I promise I'll never, ever, 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 ever ask anyone for anything again. <laughs> How is this game? Ah, worth the price. Ah. If you don't mind reading through a shitload of dialogue that is dramatically written, it's a it's a good game. I'm not gonna lie, it's a good game. Um, it definitely is reminiscent of the. Uh, Infinity Engine uh, RPGs like um, Baldur's Gate and and um, 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 not Neverwinter, but the other one, um, Icewind Dale and Planescape Torment. It's definitely got that sort of like quality to it, but um, um, yeah, it's uh, it's so dramatically written. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god. Like especially those uh, parts where we just have been with the Viserys, where you like look into someone's soul and you see their past or a, a small small part of their past, with that wolf and that elf, and like some of those things are so, so dr like the blood dripping from the blah blah blah, each drop raining down on the and it's so dramatic and sometimes I'm like oh my god, but if you can look past that, it's a great great game. The the uh, or yeah, just a good game because like the the combat is solid. Um, the story so far in its entirety is pretty good. I'm pretty intrigued. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a good uh, a good reedition. It's not not as good. It's not as good, but I think that's mostly because uh, I've got this. Um, you know, I've played Baldur's Gate when it first came out, and it was my first real RPG ever. So that nostalgia thing, this game doesn't have that. So it's obviously because now I'm used to RPGs like this. So 
I don't think it, in my eyes, it will ever be as good as Baldur's Gate. I don't think it can be. I don't think any game can be. Uh, but it's definitely reminiscent of it, and it definitely does a good job um, being, you know, like like those games. So if you like those games, especially because we're uh, starved for Infinity Engine RPGs, I mean, this is the only one in recent times that was released. So if you, uh, yeah, if you're like me and you're like, you love those games, then I would say go for it. But um, yeah, it's just, can you look past the weird conversations and the somewhat clunky storytelling, especially at the start? I had kind of a lot of trouble getting into the story. Uh, now that I'm here, I'm and I've you know I've I'm six episodes in or five episodes in a bit. I I'm definitely into the story and I definitely want to know how it ends and the twists and the turns and I can't wait. But at the start, it's like here is a world poof, uh, with with a shitload of backstory. We're not going to ease it, introduction into it. Like here's the world, bam, and oh yeah, there's some main story somewhere. Uh, that we want to tell as well and uh, it's here and these are elements of that and it's uh, it's in, in the, at the start it really feels amateurish almost I have to say but if you can look past all that then uh, yeah liking the combat system whenever I see it like a difficult game as well when you play it on decent difficulty I'm playing it on normal and so far I've only had one really really troubled fight um, um, which I actually uh, cheated through to get through because I just couldn't get it and I was like I don't want to sit the entire stream uh, fighting one fight so I actually want to you know I, I want to get going with the story so but the other fights have been have been decent yeah definitely uh, the fight we just had in the uh, in the upper room was also a nail biter, was almost yes, no. And I'm not good at these kinds of games, the combat system, I, I can tell you that. But um, yeah. So like every frame to manage everything. Yeah, that's why I don't play these games on highest difficulty. As well as I probably would never be able to finish any fight. I'm not a uh, super pro MLG expert I'm a uh, I'm a guy who just enjoys games uh, especially for the story so uh, lower difficulties are good for me <laughs> yeah um, so yeah that's uh, that's what I do I also don't mind cheating if if it means I had to go I it takes me through a difficult fight in order to enjoy more of the story like if it's a fight where you normally are not yet and there's another way to progress and then return to that fight, then I would pick that option. But this was a fight that we had to do at that point, and I just couldn't get through it. So that's why I cheated through it to get on with the story. Um, because that's ultimately where I play these games for, for the story. And that's also the reason why at the first episodes, or during the first episodes, I was really on, on the fence with this game. I was like... Am I going to cycle it, you know? Uh, am I go? Oh, uh, someone in chat told me how to god mode it. So that's what I did. Uh, but, um, <laughs> um, and also turn it off, so it's off now, obviously. I'm not gonna cheat through the entire game. Um, but, um, yeah. But that's why I also was on the fence of, um, um, with this game at the start. Because, uh, if you remember this whole rant from the start, I said at the start, it, the game really, really tries hard to get you involved in the story, and it fails. In my eyes, it fails. The start of this game is crap. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, in terms of getting you involved in the story and everything, the start of this game is really crap. Like, the first two episodes, I was wondering in this game, I was just wondering about it, and I was thinking, why should I care? Why should I care about what's happening? What's my role in this? What's my part in this? And only on episode 3 or 4, and this is episode 6, remember, this episode 3 and 4, only then, that's like 8 to 10 hours into the game, 
they told me, all right, this is your, you're actually, uh, you know, a special person with powers and can do this and uh, this is why you should care. And after that part, I was like, oh, cool, this is a good game. Now, it's just the beginning is so crap, <laughs> like in regards to what we have now. Uh, like the Raedrix Ra Keep Dungeon, which is ep which I go through in episodes 4 and 5, is really good in terms of story, except for the dramatic writing. But it's really good in terms of story content. Um, but that was the first time... Um, am I saying this correctly? No, it's a bit before that. It's with the keep, with the statue. Um with the statue that, that introduces you to the stronghold. That was the first time in this game that I actually felt, okay, this is a story I'm going to like. But all before that was really crap, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it, it just doesn't drag you in, it put, doesn't put you in. So if you are willing to go through that rocky start, I should say, then you should be fine, I think. And the combat's good, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the combat's really decent. Um, the system is just really decent. Um, there's not a, not a lot I can say about that. Just the combat system is good, decent, reminiscent of Baldur's Gate and the like. Uh, it's a true Infinity Engine combat system, so it's definitely, uh, definitely worth it. But yeah, you know, this game has two parts. It's got story and combat. And the combat is decent, so I'm not gonna talk much about that. But the story is just, yeah, what I just said. It's the start is so crap. And, yeah. That's... But now I'm, now I'm invested. Now the game has got me invested. So now it's... It's... You know, looking past the dramatic writing, from now on it's it's pretty pretty good, pretty decent. So I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about it. In Masuk, we begin our tr we begin training our daughters with the hunting knife as soon as they can talk. Many can feel dress a hair before their tenth birthday. She frowns. I wouldn't trust this kid with a butter knife. <laughs> You're too young to play with knives. You can't have a dagger, you poke your eye out. Resolve. I can tell you what, you tell me a secret now and I'll get you a dagger from the Knight of the Crucible themselves. Grab Gordy by the shirt and hold him above your head. How about you tell me that secret right now before I get angry? <laughs> oh. let's, uh, let's get the secret out of him and then be gone. Gordy's Jodops. A real dagger from the knights? Okay, here's the secret. Oh crap, I totally forgot the voice. A real dagger from the knights? <gasps> okay, here's the secret. Gordy puts his hand to his mouth and whispers loudly, I saw one of the actors hide something under a loose stone near the theater. Probably nothing as good as a March steel dagger though. Um. Okay. Thanks. Something secret. There's a loose brick by the theater. But what's the theater? Catacombs. No idea. Let's investigate. No, I want to investigate this first. This area. Before we move on to the next one. I think that's better. So let's go to the... Ooh, ooh. The catacombs. Guys, we're gonna meet some undead, I take it. Uh. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Obviously the Roman theater in the middle of the map. Oh great, can't see. Ah, I see. I see. Reach out for the soul. 
All right, here we go, guys. You see an old dwarf counting coins behind a grimy shop window, hair limp with grease and sweat, a sneer playing around the edges of his pinched mouth. The bargains of the day lie scattered across the table, from tarnished tawdry jewelry to an ancient encrusted dagger lying precariously near the edge. His half nose twitches in anticipation as a customer enters, a disheveled young noble, once white doublet stained with life gone wrong. Here you have that dramatic writing. <clears throat> hey, P4RSEC. P4RSEC. Um, Parsec, welcome. This is indeed my first PUE playthrough, and it is blind. So hopefully, no, uh, no spoilers. Um, <laughs> all right, where were we? Eyes dot behind him, searching for pursuit before he dumps the contents of his Hessian bag on the table. The dwarf leans forward, fic fingers flicking through the silverware and assorted goblets. He shakes his head empathically, smear fully settled, shoving the items back at the man. The man pleads, begs, eyes rolling panicked in his sockets, asking for something, anything, a few silvers. The dwarf leers and tosses three copper pans on the table. Desperate, the young noble tears a signet ring from his finger to the dwarf's ill-concealed delight. A few more go coins go into the pile, and the defeated man, swearing stitches under his breath, exits the shop. The venerable dwarf grins at his good fortune, fortune picking food out of his two sharp teeth as he examines his hole. There you go, a... Uh a example of the dramatic writing in this game. You're totally right, that theater. That theater. Oh, we'll get there after we've explored the catacombs. Played it four times, so they're being part all back. <laughs> Excellent. Well, otherwise, it's just a purge, you know, one second, and one second, uh, not chatting. But uh, yeah, four times, wow. Alright, so, ladies and gentlemen, every uh, hour I take a small break of three to four minutes. So please use this time to go take a drink, go to the toilet, do whatever it is you need to do. And um, when we come back, we'll be exploring the catacombs, we'll be ex exploring uh, the rock behind the theater, and uh, the other houses here in this uh, area before moving on to other areas. Uh, I am, I am, <clears throat> I am definitely uh, trying to do that. <laughs> or I'm definitely doing that, I should say. I'm definitely enjoying the ride and I'm, I'm noting the flaws, but I'm looking past them. <laughs> but I'm definitely noting it because I do like to, uh, Remind my viewers of what I think of the game. Flaws and positives. And uh, yeah, but I'm definitely enjoying the game so far. So, really great. As I said in the, uh, just now, um, the beginning was a bit eh, But now that I'm invested and the game got me invested in the story and stuff, I'm pretty much enjoying it. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. And uh, we'll continue with our uh, exploration of Defiance Bay. See you guys in a bit.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part two of Astro Games Day 122. Whoops, clicked the wrong thing. There we go, back in the game. And um, yeah, we are about to explore the catacombs, so I'm expecting undead, restless dead, maybe a priest here and there. Um, let's see. Let's see what the catacombs uh, bring us. We don't need to enter here for a quest or anything, but I do like to uh, explore everything if I'm at a certain area. Ah, right. This does not bode well. As you approach the dead man, you can feel the faint traces of his soul lingering. A stunned uncertainty holding it in place. When you near without warning, the soul hurries towards you, as though you were a solitary light in the dank gloom of this place come to usher it away. Its essence invades your consciousness. You are in a different body now, walking deeper into the catacombs, cloaked in a dark robe with a mask pulled over your face. You are following a familiar path along the canal leading to a room built around the statue of a figure wearing a robe much like yours. Others await, clothed in hoots and shadows. Ahead is another figure dressed like you, traveling in the same direction. You don't know his name, and that's how it's supposed to be. Out of the darkness, something monstrous grabs the other figure. You turn to flee, but find yourself face to face with a troll. The panic pounding through your brain is interrupted by razor-edged teeth and claws. You snap yourself out of the dead man's memory. The corpse lies on the damp and grimy ground. His hood and mask are missing, and his clothes are shredded. Sagani so draws up next to you. You alright? You look like you almost lost your footing for a min minute. Um, I assume the party knows I'm a watcher. I'm gonna assume that, so... Yeah, feels that way. She watched you quietly. You really are a watcher, aren't you? Once in a great many generations, one of my people is born with the ability to speak to souls. Usually, such individuals become elders, or a lone set of tracks in the snow. She cocks her head. I would have thought my journey would be easier if I could see what you see. But looking at you, I'm not so sure. Neither am I. Believe it or not, I once would have rejoiced to know I'd picked up, I'd picked to travel far in search of something great. But even these gifts come with a cost, don't they? Forgive me if I was a little skeptical of your abilities before. Can't say I've met a real watcher before. Oh, don't worry about him. He just likes doing that from time to time. Seems to cheer him up, so just let him. <laughs> once I've seen it a few times, the shock wears off. Every time he goes a little strange in the face, I try and see if I can hear anything. Gana grins. It hasn't worked so far. See if you can get him to tell what the spirit said. Anyone wants to talk? Nope. Alright. Let's continue. There's a doorway. Ah. A troll. That's probably the troll that killed the man. Bring it on. Oh god. There's more behind there. Black oozes. Okay. Um. Time to deal with black oozes. Uh, uh, come in the skeleton. Uh, 
summon the fans on. Wow. The fights! The fights, the darn need fights, yeah. What? We've got everyone distracted, I think. Should be fine, especially now that the pool's dead. Alright, I'm keeping my character back a bit because it's been doing it so long. You're not getting through. So we'll just be fighting here. There we go. Perfect. Turquoise. Ooze plasma. Troll skin. I guess there's some sort of alchemy in this game. Huh? Right. Let's save up. And uh, continue yeah. onwards. Let's see if we can get this door open. Okay. This door is open. See this That's it. Perfect. Okay, there's only one thing that we can explore here. Oh no. Valoon. Valoon's namesake is a yellow orange fruit found in Old Valia. Do you want to eat this fruit? It's fresh from the catacombs. Valoon. <laughs> These clear gemstones bear a similar yellow orange color. Oh, they're gems, okay. <clears throat> Most of the world's known Valoon mines have long since dried up. Well, 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 well. Thanks. The Firths of Wollongong. Holy shit, so many. Memorials. The dead people. Lorem Ipsum is simply dummy text of the printing and typesetting industry. Lorem Ipsum has been industry standard dummy text ever since the 1500s, when an unknown printer took a galley of type and scrambled it to make a specimen book that survived not only five centuries, but also the leap into electronic typesetting. The Swedish chef. Hey! Where's Chago? Where's Chago? Warlock Wormblade, the Swedish chef. <laughs> Jebediah Jiggler. I hope they don't put anything too cliche on the gravestone. Oops. Adrian the Lurker, Sparkin. I think. Therefore, you are the Lurker. <laughs> That's actually true with uh, Twitch. Uh, with Twitch channels. If someone lurks in Twitch channel, that gives the Twitch channel, you know, exposure. So, I lurk and therefore you are is actually very true on Twitch channel lurkers. Thomas Giblin. Isn't that a writer or something in this world? I recognize the name from somewhere. The rain in the astral plane falls mainly on the elder brain. Nope, no rain here. Tom Rigney? Here lies Tom Rigney, an atheist. All dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> oh, the one is amazing. <laughs> oh shit. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Because he's an atheist. Zing. Mikul Thomas Hunt, when logic and proportion have fallen sloppy dead and the white knight is talking backwards and the red queen's off with her head, remember what the dormouse said, feed your head, feed your head. Okay. 
That's uh it's obviously from what Alice in Wonderland, but I'm not quite sure what it refers to. Chris W. May ye always be a seeker of truth, for ignorance is the greatest crime one can inflict upon themselves, and in doing so, lets the lies and evils of the world go unchallenged. Oh, you can uh, you can add it to the quotes. You can add it to the quotes. Uh, here it is. Here lies Tom Rigney, an atheist, all dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and I said it, so you can add it to the quotes. <laughs> uh, Tobias Tursel, absolutely nothing. Ulicus, once tormented, now eternal. Unshra, wait and hope. User, Eureka. <laughs> Anso Raffen, lost in the White March. I owe you one. <laughs> Vesak, I'm not really dead, I'm just pretending. <laughs> Klorn. <laughs> Working with the Lords of Justice to end the tyranny of the Harbingers of death across the realms and still cheaper than Vendun. Remember, there cannot be cursed. It's probably a reference to somewhere, but I'm uh, or to something, but I'm totally missing it. Virodi, we all have a debt to nature due. I've paid mine, and so must you. That, that's true, Johnny Bear. In memory of his wallet. May the pillars of eternity guide its contents to proper use. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, one of them was called Murder and said, I think it's a new art. Oh, amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Great memorials. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't get all of them, but those that I do get are absolutely fantastic. Hmm. Just exploring the route. The root the canal. There you go. Take him down. Fighting jelly. Mm -hmm. At least it's not fighting jellyfish. Okay, I'm just saving just out of a precaution. You never know. I'll take a look. go down there okay downstairs is another territory so we're not finished with this one yet laying low <laughs> man that atheist one was so good skeletal fighter there they are the undead. Quick, 
Why aren't you? Ah, oh, because you can't reach it. There we go. Vessel bone? Guess might be something alchemical. I don't know. Uh oh. Wolves protect the flank or wolf, I should say. One wolf. Yes. I'm here. Yeah, just shoot the skeletal flank. That's fine. Um. Oh god, I'm down. Um. Oh, I'm no longer down. Okay, that's good. Let's beat the necromancer with my bed. I'm playing, you're listening to the strange sounds when you're so natural sounds, gonna see. Like the jelly fight. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's when it becomes uh, interesting, eh? <laughs> wow, I was almost dead. But... Not really. Hey. Get me the vessel bones. All right then. I'm assuming they yeah. are important. Wow, oh, there are more multiple parts to take here. Oh, crap. Oh god, ouch, 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 it hurt, it hurt, it hurt. Out of the thing. Following your lead. <laughs> Got a new follower, Kana Kanaki Sinmal Baby. Welcome to the stream and welcome to the Prophets and thank you so much for the support and the follow. The ones to bet he gets gipped by all the traps here. Hey, Rishana, welcome. Um, probably. Mm. I'm not the best uh, uh, trap person. Shh. As right. in, I don't deal well with traps in games. Um, the only time that I've dealt well with traps in games was the... Uh, Look. Uh oh, no, 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 no. Was the Baldur's Gate end fight. Huh? Who was the mechanic in our party? I, okay. Tis I. Finished. Perfect. Yeah. Found something. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You failed the disarmament yeah. trap. Finished. Finished. Crap. Hey. I don't think we have anyone with more mechanics. Hmm? Mechanics of four? That's settled. Yes. White March is not yet. Uh, now that I know, this is my yes. first, uh, very first playthrough of uh, Pillars. So I'm here. I'm j I'm mm. new to the game. Oh God! Why do our people walk over it? Serious meeting. When it's obviously there. Trap it takes eight. Oh, I see. I thought our characters would be smart Lena. enough to walk past it when it was detected, but no. Nope. nope. Hey. 
Tally of Time. A lone figure in tethered robes shuffles across the chamber, muttering under its breath. To approach, the figure halts and swivels its head towards you. And welcome, it's a fun game, I played way too much Soul Link Path of the Dance. Nice. Yeah, I'm six epi episodes in, and uh, or five and a bit. Uh, this is the sixth episode I'm uh, really enjoying so far. Um, I already told uh, people who came in at the beginning of the stream that uh, the beginning of the game was kind of meh. Uh, it didn't really drag me into the story as much, but now that the story does have me intrigued, I'm pretty intrigued, yeah. Uh, the beginning of the game was kind of rough, I have to say, but um, now that... Uh, that everything is, you know, clear and my path is clear of what I have to do. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty sold to this game. So, definitely looking forward to more of it. A lone figure in tethered robe shuffles across the chamber, muttering under its breath. As you approach, the figure halts and swivels its head towards you. Its haggard visage is a labyrinth of wrinkles and sores overgrown by a moss-like beard. What's this? Who disturbs Halig's work? Its voice rattles and gurgles like that of a drowning man. Um, I was just exploring the catacombs, sir. The figure aims a gnarled finger at the door. Then go. Thank the gods I'm not hungry. There's nothing else. Be on your way. Oh god, is that a vampire or something? What are these cursed creatures behind you? Just a few personal projects. Sorry souls stuck in their mortal shells. Their flesh is as dead as mine, though their minds are not as well maintained. They flock to me like the worms to drakes. They're not half as intelligent, but he watches as one stumbles onto a desk. They serve for amusement. The start of the game is hard. Uh... Might be because I'm playing on normal, but I didn't. The bear cave, yeah, the bear cave. That was the one thing that. Uh, that uh, now I remember it. Yeah, that was the one uh, part where it where I was kind of like, oh my god. But um, all the other parts were okay, except for the part, the bear cave, and the part in Raedric's keep, which was really crap. Like the final fight with Raedric was really crap, like really hard. But other than that, uh, it's been fine. I guess. What are you doing down here? Research. A hodgepodge of animancy and necromancy. I have the peace and quiet as well an abundant supply of subjects. Yeah, well. No, I'm not good in games like this, so I'd rather Light not increase the difficulty uh, we'll keep to too much. A grim assortment of rusty blades of honesty. I'm leaving. Worth a look. Oh god, no 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 no. No 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 no, don't walk through it, AI, don't walk through it. Jesus. Jesus. Huh? Let me detect let me disarm this. If at all possible. Finished. Perfect. Huh? Worth a look. Oh god. Yeah. Finished. Perfect. Hmm. Auto pause on this cover trap. Ooh. That is actually a great. Auto pause on this cover trap. I assume it's yeah, hidden object. Thanks. That's actually pretty nice. Right. <clears throat> All right. So we've been through this room with just a weird. Any mancer slash necromancer dude. 
I mean, yeah, sure, go ahead. Fiddle around with corpses. <laughs> Whatever you wish. Um, oh, hey, there's the Temple of Vodica, but I don't want to do that yet. I don't want anything that leads to uh, main quests or anything. I just want to see, uh, explore the rest first. In case you guys are hopping onto the traps. Yeah, no, that's like... Ugh. I'm glad I trained my guy in mechanics, though, because that definitely helps with the trap stuff. George! And stop. Hello? Hello? Yep, I've got my main character where I'm uh, maxing out on mechanics. But please try to... Uh, to keep from spoiling and stuff like that. I, uh. Well, I guess it was a mechanical spoiler, so it would be fine, but. Alright, so let's see. Can we go through here? Yes, we can. Oh, yes! Yes! More, uh. gravestone thingies. Oh god, yes. I hope they're as uh, as awesome as the, the others. Granny, I have no idea what I'm doing. Cargouche. Buff. Not near zrn. Puffy kubku. Bullshit. Snugs. Nuck. Kerns or balk gur opak zaknariral tum yvster. No, exactly, exactly. Jumal, that's true. Ornpn fr bskurv or yvrzn vna tpku vkbal. Nak vi tnir vkkungung. Fig bell, you kick, pack far. Ah, ah, my wise wortle. I once met a group named for a rock, as dark as night. I gave them my bones and they gave me this stone. Oh, dear wortle, I think it's all right. Wortle, oh, wortle, wortle, woo. Prince Reinhardt, little of note, big of girth, and open of wallet. His faith is rewarded here, resting on the benevolence of his beloved wife. Adapto long my testicolorum tusta super. <laughs> Perfect read, and you are something you do in real life right now. Nope, all's fine. I don't hear book screaming, all should be fine. <clears throat> Eric Rednose. A veteran warrior of the sea lies here. He traveled the world twice over, but no enemy born could slay him. Only the times I see embrace was able to lay this one low. Pie. Here lies Pie. He lived as he died, face down in blueberry pie. <laughs> yes, there's a good one in there. Awesome. Rip Funot. Funot. Raculot. Ziggy. Ad infinitum at ultra. Catch a shooting star and put it in your pocket. Just try not to make a liar out of yourself. Lord Winfield. Here lies Lord Winfield. In death, may he find the peace that eluded him in life. And his gold. And his house keys. And his marble. <laughs> RJS. Two absent friends lost loves, old gods, and the season of mists. And may each and every one of us always give the devil his due. 
Rich Rockwood. This poor soul passed when a fireball spell misfired. <laughs> Just the simple ones are the ones that get me. Oh, Sasha F. In love forever. Patricia S. Fade. Always crying with sad. ESCC. Ostai. Was it worth it? The question we all ask ourselves, I guess. Say balls. Roses are red, violets are blue. Omei wa mao shindairu. No idea. Unawaja, father to Odin, aka Durtak Shadow Wolf. To my son Odin, may you outshine your name. To my friends, live long and do whatever. To all, and we end. <laughs> Never with the nights to consume too much of my life. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Shaki Shawweep Khan. Chuaweep Khan. Everything in life is an extrapolation. Architect of the Goose and Fox Inn. Ah, oh, we've been to the Goose and Fox Inn. We've been to the Goose and Fox Inn. That was a nice inn. Shoaib Khan. You've done good work, sir. I've been to that inn. It was, it was a good one. It had a nice quest for us. Alright, mother truckers. I'm assuming there's going to be combat here. No, another guy is talking. This small Olin man appears to have pulled together some crates and scraps of cloth to make a rather sorry looking little camp. The thick fur on his limbs are mat is matted. And his clothing smeared with blackening grime. He looks startled as you enter, his eyes widening in alarm. Hello. After a moment, however, he smiles weakly. Hello there. Wasn't expecting any visitors down in these parts. He glances around the dim room. What are you doing down here? Eorn grimaces. I've been a little down on my luck lately. Didn't have anywhere to stay, so thought I'd come down here. Nobody pokes around in the catacombs much. Not until you, anyway. A sad tale, but not the whole story, I think. How are you hiding? The old one looks away, clearly agitated. I'm just trying to get by. There's nothing else to it. And if that isn't your liking, there's a whole lot of catacombs out there for you to have all to yourself. <laughs> um... If you tell me, perhaps I can help. He all opens his mouth to snap something, his hands bolded to fist, but he thinks better of it. Shakes his head slowly, expression resigned. Aaron sighs heavily. Very well, it's true. I've been hiding from the knights down here, but it isn't what you think. He ducks his head. It was an accident. It's been hard for me here in Defiance Bay. I suppose I thought if I got involved in city business, if I made the right friends, it would get easier in time. And it did, really. I made a name for myself. A place. People actually listen to me when I talk. Well, they used to. People can get very passionate about these things. We were discussing... I think it was shipping agreements. Of all the things to fight over. But this one night, this man, he... He got very angry. I think he may have a little too much at the inn. Yorn pauses. And I guess he didn't like Orlan talking back at him. I struck him. He came towards me and I hit him. He went over like a tree. I guess he stuck his head on the way down. Yorn lowers his gaze and shrugs helplessly. Turns out he was a knight. The Crucible Knights won't care how it happens. They just want me gone. They won't let me live long enough to see the rope. Please. He looks at you with a pleading expression. I just want to get out of the city. The second I can get money for passage, I won't trouble anyone again, I swear it. I'll live quietly. But you can't. Please, you can't tell him I'm here. Uh, 300 CP. Justice demands you pay for your misdeeds. Yeah, that's not... Oh, man. This is a poor guy. Your secret is safe with me. 
Eon lets out a breath, obviously relieved. Thank you. Truly, I won't be here much longer. If I can help it, just just have to get the going together. Anything else I can do for you? What can you tell me about these kind of cups? Eon smells wryly. Haven't explored too much of it, to be honest. Got lucky finding this little corner of it. But let me think. Well, the canal's there. That's Gorg Grogan's canal. Grogan was the dwarf that planned the whole thing. It runs up through Ondra's gift. Spills out into the sea there. Otherwise, it's just a lot of bones. There's the warrants for people that couldn't afford better. But it's all flooded now. The fans here, folks, they have their own resting places down here. Drier places. The ducks of Direwood are down here, actually. If you want to pay your respects. Unwanted. Decide Eorn's fate. The wobbly tent is barely standing. The smoldering fire is strewn with the meager remains of a recent meal. Fish bones, a moldered ring of cheese, and a blackened bread crust. What do we have? We have 3,000. Huh? We can spare huh? 300, that is a pittance. Here, this should be enough to buy your passage out of the Fines Bay. Aeon stares at you in disbelief. But, but this is... His face twists as he struggles for words. They said you were a kind soul, but I wouldn't have imagined. This will see me out of the city and well away. I'm not sure I could ever thank you enough. But here, take this. I hope it's some use to you on your journey. You have my lasting gratitude, friend. I should get ready. Boom. Maybe he'll be a friend to us somewhere later down the road. Who knows? Healing hands. Interesting. I don't think we have gloves on. Oh, I have gloves on. But, uh... Yeah, here, a priest. Our priest probably needs the healing hands one. Yeah. There you go. The queen that was and still is. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Ooh, lockpicks. And camping supplies. Nice. Perfect. Excellent. He gave us quite a gift. He was very grateful. Margrin's fire casts light in dark places. Always nice to make friends down at the catacombs. Right now we are uh, at least stopping automatically when the uh, trap is detected. What's this? Another stair down somewhere? Another area? Oh god. Yeah, with enemies. I'll get it open. Skeleton guard. And they see. Bring it! <laughs> Yeah. That's fine. Just let our tank tank the things. Yes. These ones are in for I'm just chanting, right? There we go. Uh. Oh, there's more of you. Hello. Wait, wait, see. How bad? Can you strong as well? Yep, there you go. Oh god, I'm almost dead already. Jesus. Right behind the wall. I 
character isn't very durable, it seems. <laughs> right. Steady does it. Skeletal fighter. They're okay, I guess. Especially if it's only one. Okay, this might take a while. <laughs> Yes, yes. More gravestones to read out. Perfect. Christian C. Everything in life is an extrapolation. Architect of the Goose and Fox Inn. I guess the inn can be built by more than one architect. Sure, it was a team of architects, right? Mark Matthews. A relatively modest example of potential mediocrity. <laughs> uh, M. Latin. Master Burrito Mancer. Chipotle sucks. <laughs> That's one for Jakudin, right? Uh, as are all. Forever keeping the truth. Flipper Claws. OFC NFC Try LWQ STR. I am truly fortunate to have known you all. Thank you for always being with me. Iris hope for Iris when thought about brings hope and fear in equal measure. <gasps> uh, for the mathematicians amongst us, I guess that is a mathematician joke. Rob S. Jones, long live shapeshifters! Aha! Danilov Petit. He was born and died on the Amur River. He was a loving father and a faithful husband. He valiantly served his country and not just defeated its enemies. With love, wife Svetlana and son Oleg. Hannah Amelian Jones. Here doth lie Hannah, the breeder of corgis. In these fields, he who finds her cape shall not fear the nipping of thy heels. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Andrew Senko. Life is not a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving in a well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside, thoroughly used up and loudly proclaiming, Whoa! What a ride! <laughs> oh, some of these are amazing. Listen to secrets he did, for his knowledge people bid. A master spy was he, and his intel was worth the fee. Known by name, but not by face, he got infiltrate any place. Harald Grundechan. Nothing special. Michel, son of Kornik. Here lies Michel, son of Kormik. 106 years. Only the good die young. That's a song. And space. Proud supporters of Obsidian and Project Eternity. I see. Whoa, Nick Rudusek. What can change the nature of a man? Nick Calver. If I should die, think only this of me. That there is some corner of a foreign field. That is forever Baldur's Gate. Aha. Patrick Lopresti. If Tim Kaine's name is attached, my wallet is open. <laughs> I guess that's... Uh, Supporters of the game who uh, keeping an eye out could write something in there. <clears throat> Perido, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm almost dead again. Hey, 
I think I used up all the field tree on. Yes. I'm here. <clears throat> it sucks. It sucks that this game has a lot of fatigue healing, but not a lot of health healing. Although I'm resting, but I don't want to rest because we... Oh, some people are fatigued now. Huh. Let's see if we can get this fight done without resting though. Oh god. Oh shit! No! Oh, my main character. What has happened to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing. Okay, cool. I shall deal with it. Bang! Summon the phantoms! Destruct the plants! Destruct the plants! That's a good one. And another lot of endurance was lost. That's fine. You're not getting through me. Okay, now whatever that effect does, we walk, but that's fine. Those plans are easy enough. Dank sports. Oh. <laughs> That's something for Twitch chat. <laughs> Dank. Dank me. A Wodica hood. Okay. So that Wodica. Uh, like supporters or something. Like. Breaking Wodica. Oh. My. God. Okay. Guys, cast a spell. It's me. Um. Save the guy, save the guy. Okay. Um. Shit, am I down? No, I'm there. Okay. Can you cast something awesome? Cast something awesome. Bam! Perfect. Okay. Can you do your skeleton trick? You need more troops on the field. I think I'm dead. Or at least close to it. Okay. Move on. Uh, to the next one. Um, what else are we doing? The mage. The mage is still alive. Where's the mage? There's the mage. Alright, can you do an awesome spell? Someone's three missiles appears to target and need two additional targets each. Perfect! Cast it! Lava will be on Okay, I'm not sure if that did anything. Um
We'll probably be resting after this, so let's do something else. Uh, some of the flame world molding you and explodes a target. If he has enemies, combo the infernal bins for all to see. No, cast that missile again, that's fine. You have an awesome spell. There you go, get the endurance back up. Um, oh, the wolf is dead as well, okay. You're still good, what's this? It's not that the boat's all done with defending allies, so there's a curious to decrease the deflection of nearby allies. Do that! Oh, you can't, you can only choose between two, then you just defend, that's fine. What else do you have? Circle of Endurance, that's fine. What else is there? Um, um, what's this? Press Affliction? No. Do the damage thing on your, uh, your target. No Bam! Divine Light! Washing up one to be slain. Nice! Nice! Excellent. Um. Some of it was hope to new life, that was also so evil. <laughs> Sorry for my somewhat less Twitch interaction at this point, but I'm focusing on hopefully finishing this fight. Oh god! He still has endurance though. No, I don't want to get my character supposed <laughs> One the character, good. All right, at least the character doesn't. Oh man, my character is so low. All right, keep out of the time. Oh, that was just a skeleton. These are terrain for a walloping. Do you have something else you can cast? That's fine. Do that, okay? Do that again. Lava will be on seek. Yes, we're camping after this time, so we can use everything we have at the Brave it! Bang! <laughs> Everyone, chill! Except for you. Run! Let's retreat. Let's retreat into this corner to rest. Oh man, my character is so close to death. Jeez. Let's rest. You know, there are accounts of watchers in all of the regions I've visited. If the adventuring life doesn't work out for you, you can always read souls for coin, 
give people advice, tell them which family they're related to and whom they should duel for past offenses. Um, I'm glad you find this so amusing. Sorry, it seems it's not very good that I'm raising spirits. That was unintentional. <laughs> no matter, sir, no matter. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lived through the fight, we are rested, and we are good to go explore the rest of this catacomb after the real life rest, the real life break. Every hour I take a small break of a few minutes, one to give you guys a chance to stretch your legs, take a drink, do whatever it is you need to do, and two, because all these episodes appear on YouTube, and I cut them down into nice little pieces of about an hour each. Um, you can find, that means you can find all previous 121 Astral Games days down below with the big YouTube button. A variety of games there to uh, to watch. And yeah, I hope to see you all after this break. And then we'll uh, be continuing exploring the catacombs. See you guys in a bit.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Astro Games Day 122, Pillars of Eternity, Episode 6. Why no Astral Stell? Well, because it was a break. Every hour we do take a break. Uh, to make it easy for me to cut it up into nice little parts of an hour-ish uh, for the YouTubes. So that's why we do it. And also, because it gives you guys time to stretch your legs, take a drink, go to the toilet, do whatever it is you need to do. So that's why no astral. And thanks for the host, sir. Thank you very much for the host. Strel Strelson, a good streamer himself, streaming a lot of survival games as far as I have seen. But yeah, great streamer, great person as well. Oh, our wolf is all the way back there. Wolf! Wolf! We are exploring the catacombs uh. beneath uh, Defias Bay. Hey, Magnum Crockett. Welcome. Welcome. How are you doing? He dares to have a break from entertaining us. The scandal. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it, it, it serves two purposes and I think it is good. I think it is good. I know there are a lot of people that despise breaks, but, you know, if you don't like breaks, then yeah, this might not be. This channel does have them, let's put it at that. So, yeah. I never like the sign in the shutter window that says back in five. Well, shops is a... Oh, it was loading the map. Shops is a entirely different matter, I think. Like shops are, are businesses that operate and stuff and I do this for a hobby. It's not a business. So. Are you perpetually away for five minutes? <laughs> and it was just amusing. Ah yes. The amusement factor. See, I'm still entertaining you even if I'm on a break. Oh yes. Well, Crap! Oh, damn it. I should have sneaked. I should have sneaked. I shall be quiet as a calm sea. Which is sneaky, sneaky not mode. very quiet. God. Should have sneaked. But it is fine. Remember correctly, the developers of this game also developed Dungeon Siege 3, of which I'll never forgive. <laughs> I don't I didn't mind Dungeon Siege 3. It was it was okay. Alright guys, ready to laugh? More uh more memorials. HG Wells Isn't that the writer from War of the Worlds? If Tim King's name is attached, my world is open. A Smith. A man out of time. The flame flickers, yet remains. The next trail awaits. Ooh. Thank you for keeping up the spirit. Western objects. Door in the dim. Never before was a paladin so foolish. Who could not tell the good from the ghoulish. <laughs> it's like... Texts like this are amazing. It is, yeah, it's... It's decent. What's he doing there? Well, this is a catacomb trail, and H.G. Wells is dead, as far as I know. Uh, it's a far shot, yeah, but it's not bad. Maybe trail and blood. Follow him for eternity. Our pace. Always the sharp sword. Andrew C. If you're reading this, I spent too much on Kickstarter. <laughs> Drog. Where shall I find you? You, my grotesque fellows, that I seek everywhere to make up my band. Rip Balls Brood, Angelica, level 1 to 5. I wonder what the switch is for. Matthias, level 1 1. Come on, it's just a skele. Martin, level 1 1. <laughs> oh, 1 max. I'm invincible! Peter, level 1 to 3. This orc looks nice. Let's talk to him. <laughs> Christian E. Touch, Bet Betcello. 
Journey through famous gates of coastal lands, braving icy mountains at the end of the world, amidst the many dimensions of the multiverse, in search of my inner self, fortunately, an endless journey. Hey Pocket, I bring the light! Welcome, welcome. The light is much needed in these catacombs. Yeah! Possibly, Magnum, possibly. J. Appel. Only the dead have seen the end of war. A slave frees himself from his chains only to find he is bound by a stronger set of chains. Here lies T. Overspender. T. E. Overspender. Oh, this game is definitely not related to Dungeon Siege games. Gameplay wise, this is an Infinity Engine RPG and neither of the Dungeon Siege games were an Infinity Engine RPG. I see what you mean, but also... Technically, no. <laughs> Feels good to be needed. Excellent, Pocket. If you are reading this, then I am gone. I have fought many dragons and visited the deepest dungeons. Alas, my wife appears to have found out how much I spent on this memorial. Have a beer for me. Yeah, exactly. And the, the answer to that is yes and no. To the untrained eye, it might seem uh, the same. But Infinity Engines definitely bring their own combat system. <clears throat> Darren Valance. He gave of himself so that the world might live. Eric L. Novalis. Forever at home and at ease with family. Eric Fate. Old. Not wise. Just worried. <laughs> Buy the egg. It's Strel Strelson. Sell the egg. Eric Parsons ventured forth before gathering his party. <laughs> Not a great one. Buy Nary Egg. <laughs> Warren Powell. Nothing. Fairy Hunter. With the passage of time, even the most vivid memories fade. Whether that's a blessing or a curse, well, that depends on the memory. Ooh, some of these people really thought of their uh, obituaries. The sumos are running wild in my chat. What? Where? No trap so far. Just money. And lockpicks. Yeah. I'll take those. More obituaries. More memorials. Andrew Morrison. With the passage of time, even the most vivid memories fade. Oh, it's the same one, okay. Kelly Katea Bristol. Remember that that man lives only in the present, in this fleeting instant. All the rest of his life is either past and gone, or not yet revealed. Marcus Aurelius. Meditations. Awesome. Ka Cavio Cavazos. Cavio was the legendary god slayer. Some stories have been told that he wanders the land searching for his next victim. Others say he is dead. No one knows for sure. He may be next on his list. Hata Takushi. A mage of knowledge on a quest forever. He would voyage through Praxis without delay. Finally yielding in stasis, he proclaimed to whomever, May the bridge I burn light my way. Some of these are really well thought out. Pretty unstable, particularly with multiplayer mode. Also, even so. We're about that MOFCK quirks to content. So yeah. CDX. From the shoulders of giants, he tried to look ahead, but didn't see the branch that passed and banged his head. <laughs> Some of these are so amazing. Christopher Lake. George has been my DM since I was 10 years old. 30 years later, I'm still playing his games. I'm proud to support Pillars, and I'm elated to see it happen. Willis Kelly. To my friends that shared many D20 RPG and the good times we've had. I see hills, pizza runs, blown breakers, arguments, jokes, duels, flirtons, drinks and more drinks. Sydney Phoenix Wolfram. Skull! Christopher Lake is Christopher Lee, I don't know. 
Did he support this game? Once unseated, twice retreated, thrice defeated, never conceded. The, I, I love these well thought out ones. They're amazing. Little bird. We were supposed to be your guardians. We failed our duty, but you paid the price. May your soul rest with the gods. Dalema Akuzora. Give and spend and obsidian well sand. <laughs> awesome. Cute little rabbit. Mostly harmless. Chris Woodard. I know this name. In memory of my father Charles Douglas Woodard. Isn't that one of the obsidian guys that worked on this game? I believe so. I remember I have heard this name somewhere. He's definitely a game developer of some sort. Helge Ingvoldstad. Nothing seems to be written on this memorial stone at first glance. But eventually you see there's something barely readable written on the stone. Please go and find Brad Furris, the innkeeper. Hum day is Wednesday, yes. <clears throat> Think people can generally trust me? But they can trust me exactly because they know they don't have to. Linus Torvald. Demon451. He died as he lived, surrounded by family, books and good games. <laughs> Death Hawk. Here lies Deathhawk, a young explorer that fell prey to the trap that he was setting to catch his prey. That sucks. Daniel Einspania. I only frown when I'm unopapisned. Okay. When did Strahl get this sword? Uh, I can't remember, honestly. Can't remember when I modded people that I modded. <laughs> Strahl's a good guy. Ah, trap detected. Found something. I can disarm hmm. this, yes? Finished. Yes. Fan walkers. Plus seven defense against stuck attacks. Oh, could have used that against those plants. When Strahl climbed the mountain, threw the tree at a drake and returned with the eye of sight and presented it to Astral Sith. There you go. That's how I became a seer, you know? Scroll of prayer against restraint. Perceived constraints. Damn, we could have used it against those plants. Uh. It was a big coronation and everything. It's called modesty! <laughs> I wouldn't think a big coronation would be modest. Stormy. I only frown when I'm obsidian. Peter Korsk. Be kind to animals. Don't eat them. There you go, guys. That's just what he wants you to think. <gasps> He's a psychic. He can control my thoughts. He is Knight Strelson. He is most humble and doesn't point like to point it out, I guess. Mel. Corgis are great. Alupidu. My class is rogue. You look surprised to see me. If you'd been paying attention, you might still be alive. John Mitchling, keep your mouth shut. They might think you are a total idiot, but they can never prove it, as long as you keep your mouth shut. Phantom Physicist, hope this brings you tons of joy and happiness. I wish the, be wish the best for you and all your kin. <laughs> so Strahl of the moldy plates. <laughs> so Strahl of modest washing. <laughs> Ante, he's best around. Nothing's ever gonna keep him down. Let's go. I, I thought that was a song. Sonplaxa shantasusat. Nukula. It's pronounced Nukula. Oystein weak. Flectere sinikeo superus. Akaronta movebo. Whatever that means. Alexander GV. QXQP. I always wanted to say QXP because that's a StarCraft player, but don't panic. Sir Bit Joker. He did not believe in miracles. He relied on them. Ugh. I wouldn't rely on miracles. Chillin. Whilst soldiers meet in hope for strife, and focus splits twixt hill and plain, danger itself begins to pray. Hope remains whilst prayer lives, 
One perfect moment is all to stop eternity. John the Detective. There is death in the clouds, there is fear in the night. For the dead in their shrouds hail the sins turning flight. And chant wild in the woods as they dance, round a yule altar, fungus and white. Okay. Bernardo de Medici. Service in all things to the Republic of the Silver Sun. Alright. Kai Kalidan. Jared Ritter. We are all adventurers in the great landscape of life. Be aware of those around you, but never stop exploring what life has to offer. Never give up on your own happiness and never lose hope. That's a great message. Antioscar di Kilman. Reign in chaos. Alright. I think we... Oh, there's another one there. Jeez. So many to read. Huh? It's just that. We are here to laugh at the odds and live our lives so well that death will tremble to take us. Never lose hope! Aaron James Satoshi Cole. The ocean's bed. I walked upon the pavement till I observed the passing stone roll against the gutter as if to be alone. The stone had no specific color or hue that I could see to make it specially distinguished by its society. Perhaps it was not as rigid, rigid, a bit rounder than the rest, yet I presume no reason to regard it any less. It was neither sharp nor jaded, but rather smooth on top, so I quickly cut my hand and drew the fellow up. He seemed to quake and quiver as he looked beneath a tree. I saw the others looking up with utmost enmity. Thus I hid him in my pocket and took him lance away where others would not find him or curse him where he lay. I placed him in an inlet where the ocean came to play. She drifted out to greet him and offered him to stay. He agreed as did the others and rolled to the water's edge where he tucked himself beneath her sheet and sank quietly to bed. Damn. Holy shit, that, that guy is a poet. That was a really beautiful poem. Frederick Westrin. In memory of my beloved brother, a man not made for this earth, but made for heaven. Wiener Schnitzel, das einzig war der Schnitzel. That's uh, that's one for Hendrik, I guess. <laughs> das einzig war der Schnitzel. Sorry for my pronunciation there. Ah, oh. <laughs> you're reading such a beautiful poem, and then all of a sudden, das einzig war der Schnitzel. Edward, fantasy is about strange creatures doing things that we cannot understand lurking in exotic locations that do not exist oh there you go willow nothing wolf stig too many bugs in here let me out <laughs> wonder ancient warrior from a dark age rest here but if the grave is empty watch your back josh hancock if there is anything that I have learned in my travels, it's that many things may change the nature of a man. Regret, love, revenge or fear, when whatever you believe can change the nature of a man can. Matthew S. Bombard. Unforgettable hero and adventure. Good charisma but poor constitution. <laughs> Xerxos. His last words were, were, here, hold my potion. <laughs> Zun. Ishtar Gran Theon, veiled by the night, shade amongst shadows, still enduring, yet to grow strong. Dushan Tel Telrine, there's nothing you can't handle when you use your mind. Yaska the Eternal Watcher, in memory of Yaska the Eternal Watcher of the Scrolls Law. He came, he fought, he bled, and he survived. He wrote the law and continued his journey without destination. Naughty Tane, a paladin of Sir Wait Saint Waidwin. She fought valorously in battle before being struck down by a poisoned arrow, killed in her prime. And phone, one sec guys.
Sorry about that one. Someone called for book, but she's no longer present. <clears throat> Eve's unknown source. Your all-knowing eyes shine like stars, giving me guidance. Your warm, gentle smile gives me gives strength to my soul. Your undying love gives wings to my triumph. My love to you gives me the courage to conquer all odds. Okay. G.L. Carpenter. Everybody spells my name wrong. <laughs> Excellent. Another great one. Um, I think we got it, guys. Aru, 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 Aruin, Aruin, Aruin. Welcome to the prophets. Greetings. Welcome in chat. Sorry for your for the pronunciation of your name. Ar Aruin. I'm I'm going to stop trying. <laughs> Welcome to the prophets. Thank you for the support and greetings in chat as well. Uh, so we're done here. Um, I'm not going to the temple of Wodeka yet. It's tied to a main quest, and I want to do the. Uh, a ruin, <laughs> a ruin. Oh, it, it's that easy. Oh man, I tried to get the the Greek Y in there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently it's a silent Greek Y. A ruin. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to check the rest of the town first before uh, continuing on with the main quest. Um, I think. Let me check. But the greatest one, the one that I found the most. Awesome is quote 41 um, This is the one for those that missed it I think if I do this I can recall my quote Yeah, that's the one I found the most I laughed my ass off at that one. It was so good It was so good It was a amazing memorial I laughed my ass off Oh, all right, we don't have to sneak here. That wa that that was the one I found in the catacombs that was so cool, so amazing. <laughs> you were so lovely back then. Excuse me. Good to be here. Excellent. Good to hear. Good. You're good to hear. You're having a good time. Makes a note to use this himself. It's it's such a good uh, good memoir. Hey, Keylast is welcome. This is a single player RPG. I'm not sure if multiplayer is included. I think not. Maybe someone in chat with a bigger knowledge of this game knows. I think there's no multiplayer included. Uh, I know for a fact that this game was um, supposed to be a single player RPG. Um. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. You were so lovely back there. Excuse me, I was lovely in the catacombs. Excuse me, but uh, I I suppose I think this was supposed to be a single player RPG. So as far as I'm aware, but this is my first playthrough, so I'm not a lot. I'm not aware of a lot in this game, but as far as I'm aware, this game is single player only. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm going through the through the campaign here, through the story campaign, which is the main focus of this game. This game is a lot of reading and a lot of story. With the fight here and there. <laughs> Dalton. This elderly man paces back and forth, taking short hobbled steps. His gaze is distant, and beneath it are dark rings of many restless nights. He appears to be having a conversation with someone who isn't there. Yeah, it appears. And the way you fought, cutting down two at a time, we shared quite a victory, you and I. Who are you talking to? The man looks up at you, startled. My, oh, by the flame, just a moment. For just a moment, I thought I heard her. He puts a hand to his chest, catching his breath. What troubles you? Just the memories of my youth in the North Watch Rangers. Trials and adventures from a lifetime ago. He shakes his head. Of late, the memory of lost battles and fallen friends has been especially vivid. Tell me about these memories. It's been nearly 60 years. We were known throughout Dialwood then. We thought we'd adventure together forever, collecting coppers and inspiring songs. The wrinkles around his eyes deepen. That was until we, feel, until we faced Halig of Thine. 
That's the guy we met down in the catacombs. How long have I been streaming? I've been streaming since February 28th, 2014. I was thinking for a moment, but yes. Because February 28th, 2015 was my one year anniversary. So, um, one year and quite a lot of months, actually. <laughs> <coughs> And uh, it started all with Astro Games Day 1, and we've now arrived at Astro Games Day 122. Um, obviously, I'm not streaming every day, otherwise we would have been well past 300, uh, 350, but um, I do this as a hobby, not as a job. Uh, I do have a job. I have lots of work at some point, so there are some weeks where I do not stream at all. Um, um, and there are some weeks that I stream a lot. Uh, it's it's really wavy with the way my work goes because I've got my own company. So sometimes there's a lot of work. For example, next month, September is going to be really busy. And sometimes I have not a lot of work and then I stream more. So, you know, it's kind of going back and forth. I also don't have a steady schedule, which is uh, not good from a streaming perspective, but unfortunately forced upon me because I have my own company. So sometimes they... Uh, they need me and sometimes they don't and so yeah it's uh it's going back and forth so um yeah i'm trying to uh, stream as much as i can but there you go astral was born streaming back when I, back when i was born sir strelson twas not streaming that was invented yet Getting a chat message here. Um, but yeah. Back when I was born, streaming wasn't invented yet, I think. I don't I don't think streaming was around in 1988. No idea. Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, it was talking about the guy, um He's talking about the guy from the catacombs. He was a wizard whose experiments in necromancy left a trail of bodies. Some reanimated, from Solace Vale to Midwood. We tracked him as he fled towards the Valian Republics, catching him just west of the Lake of the Drowned Tombs. It was a prophecy. He who will stream shall be born in 1988. There you go. There you go. Arun has it. Hey, Demon Eye, what up? How are you doing, sir? <clears throat> Uh, there you have it. Arun has it. It was a prophecy. <laughs> um, yeah, the Drowned Tombs. We were fools, seasoned as we were. We were not prepared for his foul magic. Our numbers were nothing against his power. I'm doing great, Demon Eye. I'm enjoying uh, playing this game. And, uh, yep, it's story time with Astral today. I even told a story at the start of the stream. So it's double story time. I got a story at the start of the stream in and I'm playing a story based game. Double story time. <clears throat> a wiser man would have ordered a retreat. Not me. By some curse of the gods I was knocked out. And when I awoke my rangers, my Rowena, they were all dead. He holds an empty air in his arms. Who is Rowena? My friend. My comrade in arms and my love. We planned to adventure together until we grew old enough to settle down and enjoy our fortunes. Young as we were, we couldn't imagine anything would tear us apart. I know this sounds like an old man's madness, but I hear her. A voice just over my shoulder, calling me in my dreams. At night, I see her wandering the catacombs beneath the city, trying to escape. It's like double cream. You could have single cream, but double! Think of it. Foolish as it sounds, I can't shake the idea that she's somehow down there, waiting for me. I even ventured below, thought it damn near cost me my life. He hesitates. Were I half the warrior I was in my youth, I'd search every grave and rat hole. As it is, I'm stuck with this feeble body and agonizing notion that my love is somehow, somehow down there, beyond my help. Um... I will search the catacombs for a sign of Rowena. Oh, it's been a pleasure, but I must run. Later, Binary. 
for science. Have fun being poked with needles. Tears spring in the old man's eyes. There's an entrance just southwest of here, on the other side of the canal. You are truly a gift from the gods. Fine, we'll go back in. We'll fight this guy. We'll fight this guy. That's fine. I thought I had to fight that guy. I just didn't have the quest yet. Well, I do now. Let's go. Enter the game and search for Rowena. Yeah, that's another matter entirely. Which of these corpses is Rowena? <laughs> Unless it's one of those zombies with a necromancer. That could also be possible. Well, nobody's here. I guess it's one of those corp... Or one of those zombies. With the... Uh, with the corpse guy and we need to slay the corpse guy <clears throat> well, I camped and I still have the merchant stay resting bonus if that's permanent Kotek, welcome to the stream, welcome it's tricky I would assume it's not an easy fight, no. As many of you guys saw it yesterday, should I keep spontaneous rage response? It, it was fun. It was fun. But, to be honest, it might lose its surprise after some... Uh, you, you might need a list of spontaneous rage responses and use them. <laughs> but it was definitely fun, yeah. Alright, let's save here, let's see if we can take him on. Why do you disturb me? You're Halik? Dalton sent me to look for Rowena. He leans back and bursts into a ra raw Ross's laughter. I'm not English, I don't know that word. <laughs> his threadbare robes drift apart, revealing an amulet and a ragged wound running from his chest to throat. It spatters a black vicious fluid on the floor with every cackle. Ugh. <laughs> no, no, I mean something completely different. Like if you have a list of those rage responses and just, like, you know, vary it up from time to time. Otherwise, if you do the same rate response over and over, it might, uh... Um... It might lose its comedic value. That old fool is still alive. I do hope he still doesn't bear a grudge for that incident. It was so very long ago. Um, you might want to get that looked at. Uh, what happened to you? What? This? He points an old thumb at the wound. <laughs> long story. I was one of the first Anamancers here in Dialwood, practiced necromancy too, which is what put Dalton and his Northwatch Rangers on my trail. He cackles, making a wet burbling sound. What can you tell me about Dalton? Only that it's a miracle, or a joke of the gods that he's still alive. He picks up bloody crust from his beard. The only thing I love more than his fetching lieutenant was the idea of his own legend. He said you killed Ren and the rest of the Northwatch Rangers. Did he mention that they hunted me down like a rabbit dog? He had just his moth eaten robes. I just wanted to continue my studies. Attitudes towards animancy were not what they are now. 
and necromancers have never met with much acceptance. Confetti would be cool. <laughs> but don't do water first and then confetti. If it's like raid response 1, you do water and then raid response 2, it's confetti. That might, that might be a sticky situation. <laughs> That would put out a pipe, yeah, true. Class in case someone's. <laughs> but they're corpses now, and so am I. Surely all's well enough behind us. Do you know where Ruan is? He seems to restrain another bout of chuckling. Oh, you could say that. If you were to retrieve my grimoire from Mudrid, I'll let you in on the secret. We don't have to fight? That is interesting. Alright. What do you need me do? When Animancy started gaining popularity, I came to Defiance Bay in hopes of finding a place where my research would meet with more acceptance. Worked at the Breckenbury Sanitarium for a few months when I met Mudred. He spits a glob of black blood on the floor. Let's just say Mudred and I didn't see eye to eye. Got so bad we were threatening to kill each other on a daily basis. Obviously that bastard made good on his threat. He runs a jagged fingernail along his oozing wound, sank a dagger into my chest while I was sleeping and dumped my body in the catacombs. If Motred killed you, how are we having this conversation? My character does have an intelligence, please. <clears throat> um... You used elements to save yourself? Oh no. That this is magic. And it took a great deal of rather timely preparation, I must say. Even so, it merely anchored my soul to this decaying husk. Nothing like the life that was stolen from me. And yet you see what little Engwithen magic can do. My mind is my own, my memory fresh, and my work can continue. And Modred Modred keeps all that is precious to him in a trunk in his laboratory. Just as he stole my grimoire, he offers you a key with a claw-like hand. On your way to Brackenbury Sanitarium then, bring me my grimoire and my revenge and you can have your Rowena. He chokes on a burbling chuckle. If there's nothing else, be on your way. Sure, I'll steal a book that, you know, practically belong to him anyway. Doom said deep shit so he couldn't stand it without saying goodbye. <laughs> to the sanitarium we go. Well not not entirely. First we need to discover the rest of the city first. But then we go to the sanitarium. This is like, yeah, like Baldur's Gate actually. Big city with lots of quests. Big city, lots of quests to do guys. Lots of reading too. <laughs> Rivenet's dormitory. Yeah, let's go there. We're uh, we're working on it, Dalton. You just hang tight. We're working on it. Just adjust the car. Okay. We'll skip this for now. The. Uh, Hall of Revealed Mysteries. What's this? Oh, yellow dudes. You guys ready for some dramatic memory writing? As you near, you feel a vibrant blah 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 blah. You see a dark room, its contents in disarray. The blinds are pulled against the light and sounds of shouting and running can be heard outside. 
This man moves through a house, throwing items into a bag. He wraps up some food, collects some clothes and searches through a chest of four fairies, arts and ants that resemble magical components. He stops at a bookshelf and quickly scans the spines, running his fingers along them to help keep in place. He sighs, sliding his finger across the spines again, mumbling to himself. Finally he chooses a couple of titles and takes them from the shelf, adding them to the assortment of items he has already gathered. A small group of squirrels and birds watch him as he passes through the rooms, moving almost as a single entity. They are trying to stay near him, but also seem to know to stay out of his way. He is obviously in a hurry, but he maintains a deliberate demeanor about everything he does. I've been eyeing this game, different the original Sin of Sin for quite a while, not sure which to get first. I haven't played the uh, original Sin, never been a big fan of the Divinity series myself, I must say, but uh, yeah, if, uh, if you don't mind the rough start, then this is a great game. Hey Dylan, what up man, how you doing? If you don't mind the rough start of this game, um, the beginning of this game is really, really crappy in terms of storytelling uh, it's it's once you are involved this game does a great uh, um, a great job of telling the story but getting you involved is quite clunky in this game but uh, yeah if you don't mind that this is a great great game for uh, if you don't mind a good old or if you're looking for a good old Western RPG experience like the Baldur's Gate uh, Icewind Dale Planescape Torment that sort of stuff the outer door is bursts open. Is bursts? Hmm. Okay. The outer door bursts open with an explosive sound, causing the animals to scatter, terrified. The man turns, bringing a hand up, holding a book in his other, whispering. Oh, in his other, whispering something that barely can be heard. Ice crystals begin to form at the tips of his fingers, crackling against the heat of the room. He sees the man standing in the doorway and immediately drops his hands the eyes vanishing as quickly as it appeared. The man in the doorway gestures, telling him to hurry and points towards the horizon somewhere outside. The man in the house dismisses him with a wave, saying he is almost done here and will be coming soon. He scans the dwelling one more time, searching for something he might have missed. Satisfied, he leaves, not even bothering to close the door. Outside he can see people, all prepared as he is, traveling away from town away from the rising plumes of smoke in the horizon. Ooh. Yeah, Buzzer Gate flashbacks, indeed, indeed. Back, flashbacks to our uh, multiplayer playthrough of that game. That was something. Historian. You see a small crowd gathering near the entrance to a temple. This man stands against the wall, the crowd forming a semicircle around him. He speaks with a calm, measured tone, his soothing voice carrying over the sounds of the surrounding city. He speaks of the world, history, the gods, and religion. He speaks of cooking, brewing, child raising, and old wives' tales. There does not seem to be a subject he lacks at least a passing knowledge to in. People ask him questions, and he answers them in turn, sometimes being detailed and in-depth, other times only giving a general answer. Regardless of what is said, all his answers seem to hit the heart to the heart of what was asked, each person satisfied with what they learned. People come and go from the crowd, its size growing and shrinking, but never completely dissipating. Hours pass and he never seems to tire, sharing his knowledge with anyone who would benefit from it. As the light of day wanes, the group finally form finally growing small enough that he draws everything to a close. As he gathers his belongings and prepares to leave, a man approaches him, asking why he does this. He asks for no money, no food. What benefit is gained from his actions? He looks at the man, gathering his thoughts, then simply tells him, knowledge brings wisdom. That is my faith. Ooh, priest of a knowledge god. I'm a big RPG fan, right in my alley. Yeah, it's uh, uh. like I said, if you like games like Baldur's Gate and Planescape Tournament, this is definitely the place to be. I mean, it is uh, a newer version of the same engine, and 
and so it has the same sort of combat system the same feel in terms of party systems it's got a great story uh, once you get past the start that is um, it really immerses you it's it's great yeah definitely I would definitely recommend this game uh, to people who like bot skate and stuff if you can look past the dramatic writing and the um, first the first part of the game hey squiddles welcome is this the DLC it is not this is the uh, standard game that I'm playing through for the very first time spilled tea empty ink pots and one detailed sketch of a fire breathing old dwarf <laughs> are all that remain of a long study session I would just study fire breathing dwarfs Corin okay By whale's eyeless face, you are one short ogre. But why are you green? And how are you getting the ducks to keep flying around like that? Uh, I'm not an ogre. He cautiously reaches his hand towards you, then pulls back. Hmm, bad or not, ducks are poisonous. He beams at you and nods his head. Uh, you are a scrivener? I don't mind dramatic light. Ah! I see. Uh, the, the start is... Hmm. It just doesn't do a good job of pulling you into the story. That's totally culture and ogre. Oh no! Playing this at the moment as well. Can't just play for a few minutes. It's hours at a time. Yeah, uh, I'm lucky my show lasts four hours each time. So I can, uh, you know, can get some hours in there. Uh, play. I'm not as addicted to this game as I was to Baldur's Gate. Um... But it's definitely fun. Maybe he's blind or something, I don't know. Because he reached his hand out when I said I wasn't an ogre, so I'm assuming he's blind. He reached the hand out to feel. You're a scrivener? He nods. Yes. I am a scrivener! I read books. I write books. I once ate a book, but only because it looked like sweet pie. Or perhaps it was sweet pie baked to look like a book. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And I'm also the Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. I'm also the collector of herbs, flowers, plants. I sell them. Mostly I eat them. <laughs> this guy's amazing. It's not a game to be played a few minutes. Need to think hours into it. Yeah, that's why uh, it is in my rotation. As you can see, it's episode 6. And uh, once my rotation completes again, of full uh, full episodes, um, you know, I start episode 7 for all the games that are in the rotation. Which are currently Dark Souls, uh, Attila to the War, and Pillars of Eternity. So once this is done, we close out episode 6. Uh, we do a few other games in between. Um, I'll be streaming Mountain Blade and Unepic. Uh, one episode in between. And then um, I'll be uh, restarting the cycle for episode 7, which includes this game. Hey, Pausy Eater, do you have the new expansion? No, I do not. This is the standard base game. Uh, I only have the basic, uh, the most basic of uh, tiers. I didn't, I didn't back this game. I just uh, got it from someone. Well, not just. He, was, he graciously gave me this game, uh, the basic. Um... I don't know how you keep track of all your games. Uh, I just played them. I, I don't know. It's a cycle, you know. It's it's the cycle that keeps it structured. It's like, okay, episode 6, done. Pillars of Eternity, episode 6, done. That means the cycle's over. And I'll start again. Dark Souls, uh, normally, Dark Souls, Crusader Kings, Attila, Total War, Pillars of Eternity. Cycle's over, boom. Dark Souls... <laughs> I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. It's a cycle of games. Um, well, he is called Astral Sea, yeah. And that too. Um, but yeah, that's the cycle that I go through every uh, every time. Because I am not a streamer who can stream the same game. Stream and stream and stream on end. I have to have variety. Because otherwise I get really bored with a particular game. So that's why I constantly cycle through them. Which is a problem with games like this. Because I sometimes lose track of the story but uh yeah finished this game long time ago awesome started out good and interesting but in the end i felt 
It felt... Uh, I felt it became a drag. Ah, I see. I thought the beginning was really crappy. Like the beginning beginning. Um, like I said earlier, like the story was good. But it felt like I saw in the distance there was a good story. But I was constantly questioning myself, how does the game involve me in the story? And that was a step that this game took very clunky, uh, I found. Uh, it was very clunky done. Uh, clunkily, I don't even know if that's a word. It was very, like, not... It wasn't well done, the, the pull into the world. But once I was in the world, and once I was involved, it's actually a pretty good story. The Council of Ducks. Yeah, the Council of Ducks was amazing. You like Baldur's Gate 2 more? Ah, I see. I'm I'm a Baldur's Gate 1 fan, man. Out of the Baldur's Gates, Baldur's Gate 1 is my favorite. But you know, to each their own, obviously. I like Baldur's Gate 2 as well, don't get me wrong. Great game. Uh, but out of the two, Baldur's Gate 1 was my favorite. I would forget where I am in each game. Uh, that's also why I uh, watch my... Uh, my um, last episode on YouTube uh, like the last part of the last episode the last bits um, I just skip through them like oh yeah I was here I was here that's why I do that in front of every uh, uh, before every stream of that particular game yeah there's a council of ducks in this game it's really fun uh, I think that's the plural of dukes um, or it might just be this world that it says the plural of dukes is ducks might be in the real world as well, I don't know. I'm not an English guy. Power's Eater, welcome to the Prophets and thank you for the follow and the support. Initially awkward and not engaging. Exactly, Demon Eye. You see that there's a story that's really great in there. Uh, like, it, it, it feels like it lies somewhere in the distance. But how the game gets you there is really weird. And not engaging at all. I find, I find. Uh, that's my personal opinion. But now that I am engaged, it's actually pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, uh, tell me about the dormitory. It's where the scriveners who work in the Hall of Revealed Mysteries sleep. I'm a scrivener, he sniffs. <laughs> this place smells like old stockings. <laughs> uh, you can sell me something? Okay, that's fine. Not interested. So these are just random dudes that, uh, yeah, they point me to Corin because that's the only guy that actually says something meaningful. <laughs> the sturdy bunks are topped with thin blankets and even thinner mattresses. All right, so they're not the richest of people. Poor scholars. Uh, Lundala's house. Alright. But before we go into Lundala's house, those viewers that have known this channel for quite some time might know it. Every hour I take a small break. I do this for a twofold reason. One, to give you guys time to stretch your legs, take a drink, uh, do whatever it is you need to do. And two, because Astral Games Days appear on the YouTubes, all 121 of the prior ones can be found down below. You see the big YouTube button, you can find them there, including a few, uh, a bit of content that isn't, um, uh, that wasn't, didn't appear on stream. So it's all, uh, there's also some unique content there. Um, so I do it to one, give you guys a chance to take a small break and two, uh, to make sure that uh, all the parts are about an hour long, neatly cut into, you know, pieces so people can digest them um, perfectly and YouTube can digest them as well because it has a particular length which your YouTube uploads must be. So uh, those are the reasons. And that's why we're taking a break right now. And when we come back, we're going to explore the rest of this town, uh, this city. And um, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be seeing what Defiance Bray has uh, has in store for us. So I'll see you guys in a bit. My breaks take about four or five minutes. So I'll see you after that one. See you guys in a bit.
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Astro Games Day 122. Quartek, thank you for the uh, for the compliment. This was actually my old break screen, uh, I have to say. Um, I did renew my start screen and my end screen, but I didn't uh, I haven't renewed my break screen yet. Um, definitely something I must do uh, in the future, I think. Boogie! Boogie! 1983, welcome to the Prophets, thank you so much for the follow during the break. Uh, you wonder what the unique content is, well I can tell you, it is currently only consisting of two videos explaining how the heck you play Infinity Wars. Um, the Infinity Wars tutorial is so far the only um, content that has not been, uh, uh, that has not appeared on Twitch. Um, I am planning to do more in the future. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of it is um, on the program right now, um, as in in the works, should I say. Uh, just waiting for uh, my uh, co-conspirator, um, if you could call it that, to send over his files so I can make my part 
uh, because I need his part to make my part and then I'll make my part and then I'll mash them together into a nice video and then I'll be putting it up on YouTube uh, and obviously I'll definitely let you guys know when that's up on YouTube there or you can just subscribe to me either either uh, <laughs> you know either are good but um yeah I'll just let you guys know on stream when it's on uh, the video um, we do that uh, on YouTube well one because we want to keep it and two uh, because it's not game related content so yeah and um, I can announce that uh, my partner in crime so for those of you who uh, who might know him uh, might know the content of the video but my partner in crime is actually phonic 88 uh, he, he announced it on his stream as well, so I think it's safe to say that I can announce it here as well. But yeah, Phonic88 and I will be doing uh, something up on YouTube. Um, and if you know Phonic88, and I say to you it's not game related, you might know, you might kind of guess what kind of video it's going to be. Uh, for those of you that don't know Phonic, it's a, uh, he's a piano guy. Just saying, he streams games, he does piano. Uh, other ideas, a stream where you're replaced by a sock puppet called Milton. Well, you've got the right sock for that, Stral Stralson. Um, the one Phil returned to you. Um, I do play guitar, but not on that video, Demon I. Just saying. And I do take singing lessons. That's, uh, that's, all, I'm <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, I see a new band on the horizon. No, no, we we both don't have the time for that. No, but it, but it was fun. It will be fun as a one-off. As a one-off, definitely. Um, <clears throat> I think the sock should be called Astral, and you should pretend there's nothing unusual. Well, I'm good at pretending there's nothing unusual. Like this house, looks very normal. Probably nothing unusual as we enter it. Even though this is a game. It should have a big dis googly eyes and a manic disposition. What? Okay. Is this how you view me, Srell? With big googly eyes and a manic disposition? Hmm, there's no one inside. Thank you for the potion. I could have a research reading all shared reading all sucks must die. <laughs> I do have the uh, All Men Must Die Game of Thrones shirt, which actually brings me to another story. Mm. For those that don't know, I went to the airport because I went over to see Phil. Um, so I flew to England and on the airport I actually wore the Game of Thrones All Men Must Die t-shirt. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you can be that stupid. It, it's, it's like, it, it has to be, it was a home videos moment because I went to customs and they pulled me aside and they said, we're going to search you. And at the start, I was like, why? And then I looked down and I saw my shirt and I was like, shit. <laughs> that was, that was like a moment of pure other Dumbness. Unlocking sure. this will require the oh, oh my God, the proper key. I've got mechanics, man. Right. Get through that lock. Hmm. Okay. That was a yeah. I was standing in front of customs and I was like, shit. <laughs> because if you go to an airport. Wearing a shirt saying all men must die. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Let's see how they're doing. Let's see if we can talk to them. This guy working at put somewhere has never seen Game of Thrones. Yeah, I said so. Like, did, have you never seen Game of Thrones or anything? And he said no. And I was like... But... <laughs> Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin. But yeah, there's actually a guy working in customs who has never freaking seen Game of Thrones. It's weird, right? 
It's so weird. Have you and uh, your love reunited? Oh god, he's gone. Oh, maybe they're at the end. Maybe she dragged him to the end. You could do a ferret accent. I'm pretty sure you could do the accent stroll, but can you do the laugh? Now there's a challenge. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can do the accent. I mean, your English as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do the accent. But can you do the laugh of Ferret? That's the challenge. You could try, but sorry for uh, sorry for saying that you might not succeed. I mean, nobody can do the laugh Ferret does. He needs to be a good enough strel to make me as Ferret laugh. Laura, the young woman stands by a cart, watching the crowd with large bright eyes that focus on you as you approach. What crowd? Take your time, traveler. If you're looking for enchanted scrolls or garb, you've come to the right place. Are you selling, selling a dagger made of March steel? She stands on the tip of her toes and points to a stall between the stairs. You must be looking for Igrun. See that tall Mao over there? He sells weaponry. What can I do for you? Seal of Fate? Wow, oh, that's pretty nice. But holy shit, is it expensive. Here, all these traps. We don't need them. Double hoots. Double great swords. Another trap. More traps. What? Another trap here. Uh, yeah. Poor Sandy, thank you. I don't see a crowd. Norma, the merchant smiles brightly. Well met, traveller. Are you interested in purchasing any rations for a journey? I'm saying a dagger made of March steel? Norma blinks at you. Apologies, but I sell no weapons here. Only fruits, vegetables and meat. Would you be interested in any of those? Do I have camping supplies? Two or four, two. A dragon egg! Oh, you can't hatch it? Crap! Crap! I can't be, uh... T uh, uh what's, her fa what's her face? What's her name in the game? Crap. From Game of Thrones. Khaleesi. Can't be Khaleesi in the game. Oh, more dramatic writing. Let's go to Igrin first, though. Igrin stands behind the stall, polishing a broadsword. The patterned flesh around his eyes He's crinkled with age, and the muscles in his arms are knotty and lean, but he holds the weapon with ease. He nods at you. Come take a look. You won't find a finer collection of armor and weaponry in the Fiend's Bay, outside of Sonelts, of course. Flesh is a crooked gin grin. I wondered the same thing about the Dragon Egg. Yeah. What's so special about Sonelts? She operates in the Expedition Hall. He jerks a thumb over his shoulder. Sells the best equipment in the city, but Wayman keeps her sh on a short leash. Keeps a fine inventory reserved for chattered expeditionists, members of dozens, and anyone else taking a liking to it. God, these things are... expensive. But I guess magic items always are. I could buy Shatterstar, but... That's about it. Let's see with that cro you're the crossbow user, right? <clears throat> A war bow. I guess crossbows are better. 
Yeah, you have like a pistol. Or a pistol, a musket. Eriquibus. Another musket. An Eriquibus. God, this guy has a lot of traps here. Sell, sell, sell. I guess we don't need the bows if we have an Eriquibus and a crossbow, dude. I wonder if George Martin will ever finish writing the series. Well, fans can only hope. Fans can only hope. I at least won't need the hunting bow, I guess. Uh, so many capes as well. Trade. There you go. Alright, so the finest wares. So the March Steel Dagger is probably uh, with the finest wares. Hilda, as you near, blah, 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 blah. You see a dimly lit room with extravagant decoration. Pillows of silk, brocade cover, the floor surrounding a large velvet covered divan. A man sits on the divan, his shirt untucked and only halfway buttoned. Behind him stands this elf, dressed in the same lavish finery as decorates the room. Her hips gyrate gently, dancing slowly around the man as she begins to sing. He looks up at her, blearily, intoxication clouding his vision. He smiles, tunnelously humming along with her. Her words are too low to hear clearly, but as her singing grows more intense, the lights in the room seem to dim even further, and everything loses focus. She takes his face in her hands, singing directly to him, running her hands down his shoulders and arms until she is holding his hands. Okay. The, man eyes, the man's eyes grow heavy and he quickly succumbs to sleep, slumping backwards. She holds his arms, catching him as he falls, and gently lays him down the divan. She stops singing when his head hits the pillow and suddenly the lights brighten back up and everything snaps back into focus. She slips her hand into his jacket, retrieving an item that she places in a small box sitting on a nearby table. She looks back at the man, shakes her head and escapes into the night. Thank you, great storm. You see a man stumble, knees bleeding, clothes torn, eyes dead. His skin is damp with sweat, but he pushes onward. His back is arched, defeated. At his side hangs a bow, strings limp from this disuse. He trips through the underground, sightless, ignoring all but the sound of his own anguish. He comes across a deer, guts spilled across the forest floor, still steaming in the cold night air. A Stelga watches him from above, perched on the trunk of an enormous fallen tree. It takes the man a moment to notice his danger, and he seems almost glad for it. And I am glad for Adiothena! Welcome to the Prophets and thank you for the support. <clears throat> the Stelga unravels itself from the tree, eyeing him carefully. Its distended stomach almost brushes the ground as it jumps down, and the man dives to meet it. For a moment, time seems to slow as man and beast collide. The Stelga roars, swiping at him with its claws, and soon has him pinned, great yellow teeth and acrid breath ready to end his intrusion, but with a wet ripping sound, instead the agonized Stelga is himself gutted from neck to rump. The man exhales deeply, covered in blood, ponderous, not today, not today. Eddie Athena got an astral yeah. sing. Astral soon. All right, that were the people at the market. Let's investigate that the arena thing, because there's supposed to be a loose pebble. Yeah, this this is the game of reading. Yeah, this is the game of reading. Not for everyone, but uh, reading a lot of dramatic writing. <clears throat> Oh wow, there are people here. Your time has come, Sigrun. Your life is at its end. There's a play. 
Oh, London, she calls to me, the pallet knight. And you have such poor luck with women as it is. I cannot die yet. My children, what of my children? But you have no children. That sucks. Of course I do, you fool. A wealth of them. Great armfuls of golden... That is, golden hair tots. All of whom I love dearly. Ha! Huh. Okay. Wait, he said the stone was behind the theater, right? How can we get there? The benches are strewn with chicken bones, broken bottles and greasy scraps of paper. Hmm. Yeah, there's lots of story in this game, definitely. According to the game, I can't get there. Hmm. Use prescription? What the hell's prescription? Oh, hidden object found. We've got it, we've got it. Found something. There it is. Hmm. There it is. What the hell? A common sign in dialwood. Blackson is fashioned from sun reed liquor and the boiled sap from glove. Glumfath and trees. It's known to lend a sense of heightened alertness to the user, though it leaves one feeling worn and lethargic once it wears off. Oaken Scarab Figure. Summon three wooden beetle. Noise and amethyst. Perfect. Right. Alright, let's see what they have to say. Can't talk right now. Lumdala, the grotesque woman, has a gaze that could cut stone. She turns her chiseled cheekbones to the sky and favors you with a look of acknowledgement. Her eyes shimmer under silvered eyeshadow and raise a precise line of call. Before you can speak, she throws her hand up in a dramatic fashion. Hail, traveler. Autographs after the performance, please. Great art requires great concentration, and greatness is expected from the Ravel of the Stars. What the hell's the Ravel of the Stars? We are the finest theater troupe in the city. We believe that the best art is immersive and true to life. She looks at the amphitheater with rapturous expression. We stage our performances right here in Copper Lane for the edification of all. I suppose I can spare a moment for a fan. I just asked where you were from, how do you... What? Okay. Does the Revel of Stars take in many new members? But of course! Good drama is the bond with the soul and we wish to offer a true theatrical experience to as many as possible. What kind of members do you take? We'll take in the new and the old, the tall and small, the experienced and the inexperienced. Whoever is best suited to fulfill a role to the utmost. How long do you keep members? As long as they are able to satisfy the demands of their roles. She smooths a wayward strand of hair. True acting can be a grueling process. So, some last longer than others. What do you do? Very well. If you happen to know any aspiring thespians, please send them my way. Her lips stretched into a hungry smile. We always have a place for novices. What do you do? That depends entirely on the demands of the role. She lays her slender hand on her chest. I am Pallet Knight, the widow of the Woot and the warrior queen Mokka. All at different times. To live a different life each day is a glorious thing indeed, my friend. Sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
I heard these are last team performances. <laughs> that Orlin is so funny. Can I talk to you? No? Yes, I'm an adventurer. I'm bodging in on the, uh, the play and uh, to talk to people. Alright, to Brackenbury! To Brackenbury! Oh, he already did for Ceres. Yeah, yeah. He already did for Ceres. I haven't found your dagger yet, son. Don't worry. To Brackenbury! Don't worry! To Brackenbury! Brackenbury. It'll take 12 minutes. Wow. 12 minutes of city to travel through. Alright, we have arrived in Brackenbury. Okay, alright, I see. It's a very nice place to explore, just a hole and like go blim 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 blim. Raymond Manor and the charred barrel. I'll always go to the inn first. That's usually where most quests are found, I guess. RPG experience! Get your quest at the end! Tristwin. The young elf is dressed in gaudy robes that seem ready to cast off. He picks at a heavily brocaded sleeve and continually adjusts the golden chain around his neck. He looks up at you. Did she send you to run me out of town? You can tell her I'm not going anywhere without that medallion. I told Cyril I wouldn't let it let her sell it. If that's what you're here about, then save yourself the trouble. Plums up his chest, but glances at the exit. Um, I'm not after you, but maybe I can help. He pulls out a shining button. That's a relief, but I don't see how. Cyril's a quarters and over at the salty mast in Ondra's gift. We've been working together for over a year now. I find a noble with more money than sense, fill him up with liquor, and send him her away. They have a good time, and Cyril takes her free, her fee, and a little extra. He rubs his fingers together. A hundred cuppers here, a trinket there. It's a bounty for us, and these lords and ladies never notice anything missing. You better not try anything with me. Relax, we're just talking. Besides, I'd like to get out of that business. Anyway, we, all, we always split the bounty, until a week ago. He squeezes his lips into a tight frown. She takes a necklace off some noble. It's an Angwithan medallion, damn near priceless. That relic is sacred to my clan, but she won't part with it for any sum I could afford. Tucks at the golden chain around his neck. And even if I wanted to, I can't go home without it. That's a hard thing. <laughs> You furrow in pity to a thief? Interesting, okay. Um, tell me more about your situation. Picks at the ammo of his sleeve. What do you want to know? Tell me about Cyril. She's a courtesan at the salty mast over at Ondor's gift. She wasn't born too much, but she's done what she has in order to escape that. He gazes a string of amber beads around his wrist. She's a good friend. He folds his arm in his trailing wrinkled sleeves. Without her, I'd probably be living hand to mouth like the rest of the Shattering Spear. But this isn't about her or me. It's about the 40 people in my clan and the way of life we've held for, to for generations. What makes that so important to you? I grew up in Air Glanfath with the Shattering, shattering Spear clan. We Glanfathans have protected and within ruins for thousands of years. It's the one duty the gods asked of us in exchange for the freedom to live as we please. He fidgets with an emerald ring on his pinky. But treasure hunters looted the ruins in our territory, and we left the wilds we dwelled in for generations. Most of my clanmates scattered to towns around Dalewood, and probably live on crusts of bread. 
He looks at his embroidered robes with disgust. Restoring this medallion to the ruin would earn our gods forgiveness. The Shattering Spear could go home. That is all rather fascinating. A single medallion to earn the gods favor and so return home. It rather reminds me of a story I heard somewhere. All I want us. So, will you help me get the medallion? I'll see about getting the medallion. The finder at this ulti mask. The only way anyone sees her these days is by paying. So you have to go through Maya. Fidgets with his sleeve. But whatever you do, please don't hurt him. Hmm. Uh, did you want to talk about the story? No? Why do you say such interesting things and don't want to mm. talk to me afterwards? Tell me the story, dude. On your word. Yes, my friend? Can you tell me the story? No. Mm. You can't. Crap. Right, noble. The charred barrel is the finest turn of the city if you're looking for lodging. Great. Business around here took a hit when Stalwart's min mines dried up. The scripts and props belong to a production of the most unfortunate tale of Favian Burnout. La! Oh, just uh, warming up. Okay. London. Bagging your. Oh! It's you. It's good to see you well. We had a few rough days here. Well, then we found this place and they were kind enough to hire us both. Things have been wonderful. I can't tell you how much you appreciate what you've done. We done something for you? I can't remember you. Nonton. We probably did some quest for him. Fine, that's fine. Ingroot. Oh yeah, I'm walking behind the bar. Good day to you. The man is dressed in neat but functional clothes. His sun-wrinkled skin and limber musculature reflect a life spent in the wilderness. Well met. What brings you to the charred barrel? Will he not even buy you around? Apparently not, but we did something. Uh, who are you? I was a cartographer. For the duck for decades, he rubs his neatly snubbled cheek. Crossed the White March half a dozen times and mapped most of the ruins of Thane Bog. He grins, flashing a gold tooth. Good career, but one suited to younger men. When I came back to the Fines Bay for good, Cliver and a few f other friends in the Knights helped me get the right rights to refurbish this place. There's strong ale, quality entertainment and a fresh sea breeze. He raises a mug. What more could a man want? Is this your place? It's my retirement! He thumps the bar. Used to be a warehouse back when Brackenbury saw more ship traffic, but it fell out of use when the area became mostly residential. I inherited it from some great uncle who'd never had any luck pawning it off my cousin. Now it's the most popular spot in Brackenbury. The nobles come to unwind and kith from other districts come to mingle. He leans closer. We get a few rough types too, but they behave in here. Besides, the coins here as good as anyone else's. Cartographer for the duck, yeah, they need to know how to where to migrate to, man. When the season arrives. <clears throat> Any adventures I could hire? I still don't know what these adventurers do, but they are expensive. <laughs> I need to know uh. what to do before I can hire them first. Alright. Noble, noble, noble. Alright, so two more memories, guys. Here we go. Some more dramatic writing. You see a woman clad in expensive finery. Her eyes flash as she interrogates a trembling wreck on the ground. Reaching into his pocket, her hand curls around an address. And she smiles grimly. Moments later... She's in a bad raggled alleyway, her pace quickening. Her braids trail around the corner and she is upon them. 
or perhaps they are upon her. The action does not last as she easily dispenses of, a ma of man after man, searching their faces, clothes, shouts for something she fails to find. Frustrated, she moves on, but not quickly enough, as an Orlan attacks her from behind, the seal upon his finger glittering with malice. The woman's eyes alight upon it as she twists to evade his blow, and her eyes burn bright. Perhaps this was not a wasted trip after all. Ducks, remind me of the raid we did quacking. Yeah, indeed. We did indeed quack a raid. We see a large group of people gathered in the common area of a large inn. This man is standing in the midst of people, engaged in conversation with someone. He is smiling and talking gregariously, moving from person to person with ease. He is able to extract himself from one conversation and insert himself into another without breaking in his stride. He kisses the hand of a well-dressed woman, dipping her, then twirling her back into the arms of her escort. He moves on to another group, slapping someone on the back while laughing at a joke, and then he's off again. Sliding between people, hugging someone, shaking hands, he never stops. Finally, he seemed to have hit his limit and he excused himself from the gathering much to the dismay of everyone there. He smiles and waves as he leaves, making a little bow with a flourish of the hand as he closes the door. Once he is away from the inn and around the corner, he pulls several objects from a concealed pocket in his jacket. He looks at each one in turn, a necklace, a brooch, a couple of coin pouches and a small jewel. Smiling, he pours the money into his palm and quickly counts it, still aimlessly wandering the streets. He passes a beggar who holds out a bowl to him, pleading for a pittance. The man stops, smiles at the beggars, and drops all coins in his mouth. Then he walks up, whistling happily. That's an interesting way of thieving things and then giving it all to a beggar in the end. It's interesting. Still not entirely clear how that happened, me neither. But it was fun. Please don't drag dirt into my kitchen. The patrons here are particular. Ooh. Let's investigate the cellar. Maybe there's some food. Ooh, there are people here. Bandits! Nice and quiet. Bandits! Uh oh. Just having a little chat with my associates, but your your bandits, what? Basic hygiene jerks. Oops. Wait. What? So they are labeled bandit. And if I steal, they attack me? That just Wait, doesn't sound right. Like That's crack, dude. That is so weird. Get freaking Shrek. Maybe it's their stolen stuff you're stealing. You are stealing from their hideout. Well, they are the bandits. So me stealing bandit stuff is not considered an evil act, right? The proprietor has collected a respectable variety of bottles from around the world, from Tart Adera to Reds to sweet summoner wines of Rauta. Smite them down! <laughs> Don't judge a yeah. book by its cover. Hey, Matt Liberator, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I have smitten them. Indeed. Flasks of the infamous Soulburn of the Deadfire Archipelago are nestled next to Crystal Clear, Na Sitaki, and Glamfallon Spirits. I wonder if they notice upstairs though. Because if so, I'll reload the save. Sure. 
No? No one? Excellent. Oh, nothing. Just smitten down some thieves. That's all. Just continuing like usual. Nothing's wrong, right? Noble, noble. More do jest. Great name, though. You see a group of children shouting, twisted laughter erupting from two small mouths. An eyeless body, an eyeless boy, face grown over with strange black tusks, cowers against a log. His small shoulders shake as he whispers to himself, trying to block out the relentless trail of insults. Freak. Monster. Death head. The boy stays long after the other children leave. You see the same eyeless boy, now a man, many years later. Another group crowds him. But this time, it's an audience. He tells a long joke about a ghost in the privy. By the time he reaches the punchline, the crowd is yelling, starting to sound very much like the first. Oh, poor dude. Damn, so many uh, memories here. As you near, blah, blah, blah. You see a pair of chain gloves sitting on a, sitting on a table between two men. Gloves are inlaid with gold ruins and glow a faint blue aura. The man stands on one side of the table and across from him is another man dressed in arcane robes. The man retrieves a small pouch and hands it to the wizard, telling him to count it to ensure his entire payment is there. The wizard smiles, giving the man ha a half bow and then empties the pouch into his hand. You wanted these gloves protected from thieves and other unsavory characters, he says, dropping the coins piece by piece back into the bag. Put them on and they will never leave you. The man slowly slips his hand into the gloves, a look of satisfaction on his face. His smile falters a little once they're on his hands. The gloves flash briefly and then start making a light metallic tinkling noise. The look of satisfaction quickly becomes one of concern and he grabs at the gloves, trying to pull them from his hands. His fingers tug at the openings, but they have shrunk, trapping his hands inside. The metal begins to work its way into his skin, small drops of blood appearing on the surface of the gloves. The man drops to his knees, fighting with them and crying in pain. The gloves constrict until they have completely shrunk around the man's hands, becoming one with the flesh. The man looks in horror at his hands and then up at the wizard, who has finished counting his money and is standing at the door. You certainly won't be losing them now, he says, stepping through the door, slamming it behind him, leaving the man on the floor, staring at his hands. Deals with wizards, guys. Deals with wizards. You see a woman sway, her voice floating gloriously above the court, lilting and sweet. It twists around them and they smile, enraptured as she palms their hearts one by one. She begins to dance, but something in her step is offbeat. She pauses, confused, a snatch of some foreign sound in the air, competing, resisting. It takes her a moment to spot him, a small man with a single brow chanting under his breath, disrupting her song with his staccato incantation. She intensifies the dance, the swing of her hips wider, her feet a flicker above the square tile ground, the underlying chant in her own song more persuasive. His lip twists in intently, vibrating with the effort of countering her charm. And then, a note, crystal clear, bright and tinkling. He begins to smile dazedly, dazedly, as her song continues, and he forgets all about resisting. She has won the day, and the court. Okay. And now there are pirates. Ah, oh, bloody pirates. First there are bandits, now there are pirates. Great in your running, sir. Jeez. Melwith watches you through cool and eyes. She puts her hand on the hilt of her blade, jangling the jewels that hang from her wrist. We don't know each other, stranger. Best we keep it that way. What brings you to Char Barrel? Merwith raises an eyebrow. What's it look like? Good wine and a little peace and quiet. She flips a copper coin with her thumb. Ascarian. Ascarian doesn't ask too many questions. You don't seem to like a Brackenbury local. I'm a sailor, she gives you half a smile, and they liberate her of certain goods. Melwith casually fingers a large earring. And the nice thing about the snobs here is that they're usually too polite to ask more. I'll be going. Pirates. Okay. 
Let's not steal more. Bloody pirates. Captain Miller! Welcome to the Prophets and thank you so much for the follow and the support. This song reminds me of another game. Just can't think of it. Top of my head. Uh, that song in that inn that just played. That reminds me of a different game. Wolf Cup! What up? Um, Raymond Manor. We didn't get a quest for it, but was an interesting show that's all I can really say unless the quest is right outside no they're only nobles okay hello mr. Raymond sorry I late traffic was bad oh no worries Raymond did it say sir yeah so the servant pauses on his task to bow avoiding eye contact I guess because it's a servant. Our town's heaving with people. People everywhere, yeah. Lots to uh, lots of people to talk to. There he is, Lord Raymond. Yo, what what's hip hopity happening, Lord Raymond? Lord Raymond holds a shipping manifest in his well manicured hands. Despite his expensive clothes, he has a sallow complexion and restless air of a man who devotes all of his days and most of his nights to work. If you have business to discuss, make an appointment with my attendant. I don't have time for unexpected visitors. Tell me about yourself. He snaps the pages in his hands. I am lord of this house and not prone to idle chatter. If you have no business here, I suggest you be off. He doesn't look up from his papers. We're just gonna talk to people here. That are not just servants and guards and see if they have something more to tell. What? The net Raymond. Oh. My father never reads things. I was like, oh, and you're not a new character to talk to. Crap. The labels, all perfectly angled outwards, boast an array of fine vintages. They're coated in dust. There was about 30 to 40 cars stuck behind it. 10 mile an hour behind a funeral cottage. <laughs> yeah, those things. They happen. They happen. I hope you're doing well, though. Wolf. The old serving woman regards you with bleary eyes. Begging your pardon, but I'm afraid I'll have you up to ask you to return downstairs. Visitors aren't permitted on the upper floor. Fine. Fine. There's something all about this house, though. And I'm guessing a quest is going to lead me right to it. No pluck I can read on the statue, okay. More memories though. You see a dark room. Noise filters through a nearby doorway. The sound of battle. Scuffling. Metal on metal. Cries of pain. Rise and fall as fight rages outside. There's a bellow of rage and a Zorib runs into the room, holding a book tightly against its chest. Looks around frenetically, searching for something. It hurries to the far side of the room and opens a box sitting on a makeshift table. It places the book in the box, closes it, and then bends over to push the box under the table. This is the last time you are playing this on stream? Isn't it? Didn't you say you was gonna play something? No, 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 no! This is... no! No, I'm, I'm intending on finishing... Uh, on finishing this game. Attack! Attack! <laughs> No, let's let's keep it peaceful. Kothak, Kothak, let's keep it peaceful. <clears throat> uh, maybe I was a bit salty after that last fight with uh, that I had to cheat, but no, no, I'm I'm definitely intent on finishing this. It's getting more and more interesting, uh, this game. So, yeah. <coughs> A small stone hits the back of the Zorab's head, knocking it forward a little. 
The stone bouncing to the ground, rattling a little as it comes to rest on the floor next to the Zorov's foot. It freezes in place, hands still on the box, eyes wide. As the clattering of the stone quiets, silence take control, takes control of the room again. The battle outside has stopped. It spins around to find this woman standing in the doorway, leaning on a savage looking two-handed sword. That book contains the answers I need. She snarls at it, moving forward. It hisses, rushing to meet her. Seconds later, she's retrieving the stone from the floor, having separated its head from its neck with the practiced flick of the sword. She smiles, kisses the stone, and then places it on a pouch on her belt, patting it fondly. Leaning over, she pulls the box from under the table and opens it, elated with her find. You see a lush forest, quiet and dark in the early morning light. This woman walks through the trees, a captivated look on her face. She doesn't appear to have a particular destination in mind as she wanders slowly between the enormous trunks, looking up through the branches and occasionally making a low chirping sound. When a responding chirp echoes through the quiet morning, she turns to head in that direction, obviously not concerned with losing her way. A loud metallic snap followed by a quick yelp cuts through the air as she looks to it focusing in the direction from which the sound came. She moves towards it on the verge of running. She seems to realize suddenly that caution is important and freezes, looking down her foot hovering over the pressure plate on a well-hidden bear trap. She leans back and gingerly places her foot back on the ground next to the trap. She looks around, anger darkening her features. Grabbing a nearby branch, she presses it down the plate and disables the trap. When it snaps shut, she hears another yelp, this time much closer. Scanning the ground for more traps, she carefully makes her way towards the trapped animal. Rounding one of the trees, she spies him, a large wolf, bony with malnourishment, right hind leg held tight to the rusty metal teeth. He looks at her and the low growl starts in the back of his throat. He hackles to rise and she pauses briefly to let him catch her scent. She lowers herself closer to the ground and holds her hands out, palms down, in front of her. Aren't you a beautiful boy? She inches towards the wolf. And this, ladies and gentlemen, marks the end of Pillars of Eternity Episode 6. It is time for me to close out the stream, but not of course before I go through the announcements once again and thank you all for your support. Okay, so, announcements, um, and also let me know if you're ready for a raid, and we can raid someone. Um, announcements, um, this was the, uh, only stream of the week, unfortunately. Uh, weeks are going to be extremely busy from now on for just a bit of time, um, so, um, the stream is going to be on the back burner. I'm going to try and stream at least once a week. Uh, currently slated for next week, Tuesday. Um, to keep that up. But um, yeah, work is going to uh, to be very busy the coming period. So um, that's unfortunate, but it has to happen. Um, so there is the stream. Uh, I'm still in contact of the BTTV emote. I still don't know when it's coming. Um, I have been, uh, I've been talking to the artist, um, I described her what uh, I wanted, the seer tank, um, so she, she sent me a Twitch message back, she said, can you describe what you want, um, I sent it back to her, this is what I want, and I haven't heard back since, it's been a few days, so I might, uh, send up a follow-up message, uh, we'll see. Um, but I hope I'm still uh, in the running, otherwise I'll have to find another artist which is going to take even more time. But uh, we'll see, I hope to get Seer Tank uh, going as soon as possible. Um, so that's it on the emote front. And yeah, we are, clo we are closing off the cycle of episode 6 with this game. Uh, next time we're streaming, so that's next week Tuesday. I will be bringing back the uh, Mountain Blade mod series because Mountain Blade that I streamed uh, earlier a few weeks back or last week was such a success and everyone's been clamoring for more Mountain Blade on my channel so I will be bringing back the Modern Blade um, the Modern Blade the Mountain Blade mod review series 
with a Sengoku Jidai mod for Mountain Blade next week. We'll be uh, looking in, uh, into it. I've heard a lot of good things about the mod, haven't seen much of it yet myself. So we'll be exploring it together, looking into it, forming my opinion as we as I go, and you know, uh, you can you guys can form your opinion of it as well as we go along. Um, doesn't appear to the new DLC that comes out tomorrow. Ah, excellent. So that's why I got questions all the time. Is this the new DLC? Uh, no, not the Warring States mod. Uh, it's called Ge Geki Koju or something along those lines. It's a Japanese. Uh, Japanese name. It does have samurai, yes. It uh, it takes place during the Sengoku Jidai. It's the same day, it's Tuesday, uh, same time. I can tell you that already because uh, that's the only day of the week I have off next week. So, um, yeah, next week Tuesday is going to be uh, um, going to be that mod. Been thinking of streaming Shogun 2 myself. Excellent, Strel. Great game. Awesome to stream as well. So, definitely a recommendation. Um, but that's it for uh, the, the coming things. Also, um, after that mod, the week after, because I can only stream once next week, the week after, I'll be streaming a game called Unepic, which is a game that has a lot of spoofs and, uh, um, you know, a lot of spoofs and a lot of pointers towards D&D. Towards &D. It's some sort of D&D &D, uh, uh, spoof game. Uh, which is kind of fun, so I'll be streaming Unepic after the Sengoku Jidai mod and then uh, After that we'll be uh, restarting episode 7 cycle Which of course starts with Dark Souls as some of you may already know um, I am still looking for a Crusader Kings 2 challenge to play uh, and get it back in the cycle uh, But currently I'm thinking of just playing a Germanic Pagan because I just love that play re to play that religion and it definitely becomes a challenge later on. It might seem OP at first, but it definitely becomes a challenge later on to keep an empire together. So I might just play a uh, playthrough of Germanic Paganism because I really love that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, probably for somewhere in the future, maybe in the next cycle already. Um, but yeah, for next week, um, there's, uh, there's going to be uh, the Sengoku Jidai uh, mod. Um, I think that's it guys, I think that's it, that are all the announcements for me. Also, uh, over at twitch.tv slash binaryferret, you can uh, hear me tomorrow over there, um, because I'll be participating in the Crusader Kings 2 event that's going on right there. Uh, we're playing Crusader Kings 2 with a bunch of friends, Binary Ferret is one of them and he is hosting the channel uh, that we play it on. Uh, so I won't be there in physical form. Uh, you won't be able to see me, but you will be able to hear me. Uh, we do it through TeamSpeak and, you know. Uh, so, yeah. That is, uh, that's for tomorrow evening. That's over at twitch.tv slash binary ferret. So, yeah. If you're interested in that, you can find me there tomorrow. Um, Astral will be the one doing the cackling and burning that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds very accurate. Um, for those of you that don't know how to do a raid, the raid sentence is very simple. Uh, this is the sentence. I can't type and talk at the same time. From CS Fatal, this raid. This is the sentence that you copy and uh, well, you copy it, so you have it pasted and ready. Uh, I will be giving a channel out soon. We will go there. You will uh, you will lurk in the shadows. You will do nothing. Other than watch the channel, of course. And when you hear me say something along the lines of, we have found, uh, we have read the heavens and found this channel shining bright like a star, or something like that, you will post um, that sentence and some quacks. Uh, but post that sentence as well. But also you can add it with some quacks, of course. That's, that's fine. Uh, post that into the channel and we will make a nice rainbow of colors. And uh, yeah, invade someone's channel, make someone's day. Um, so I'll be going over to the end screen whilst I search for a target. So wait for the target uh, right there. And if you have to go, um, then I will see you guys hopefully next week. Uh, next week, Tuesday, same day, same time, uh, same place, but a different game. The Sengoku Jidai mod for Mountain Blade. Um, 
Astral is so understanding of our delusions. I'm a psychologist. I, I know how this goes. Oh, yeah, I know who we're reading. Oh, yeah, he's a teammate of mine, of the Kaleidoscope Gaming team I'm on. He's a great caster. He's from Japan. And uh, he's super awesome, super awesome guy. I'm sure you guys like it there. So go over to this channel. Wait there for me. And, um, yeah, I will see you guys over there. And uh, until next time, tomorrow or next week, for uh, the Sengoku Jidai mod. Thank you all for the support, the follows, the continuation of the follows, the chatting. It was all very amazing. And thank you all so much for making me, uh, for letting me do this. And, uh, you know, have your guys' support. It's very, uh, very nice of you. Thank you all, and see you next time.